Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum, and the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to Season 3 and Episode 289 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got a little shoulder action for you here this morning. Mm. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver Pronouns. He, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A. And it is, well, there's a almost like fairy tale little dusting of snow falling here at the Beaver Lodge here today. And I have to shoot myself a gentle correction. Yesterday when I said it was plus four, it was actually minus four because for some reason the weather network uh, gave me weather for some place in Ireland <laughs> when I looked it up. So it was plus four there. So when I went outside yesterday, it was like, oh, wait a minute. This is eight plus four. <laughs> yeah, I could assume that you must have been a bit shocked by the temperature when you set foot outside. Yeah. Uh, I did. I did. Um, so apparently um, yesterday, not only no, it was two days ago. I thought it was still 2023, and yesterday I could not read or do geography. So, hey, hey, me. It's a good thing. Well, I'm you know, sometimes cute. these things happen, right? It's a good thing I'm allegedly cute because some days I'm not too bright. <laughs> uh, good Lord gives us everything so we could give us all a little something so that we can get by. I just need to bat my eyelashes and somebody will save me. Um. <laughs> I wish it were that simple, but when you're old and bald like me. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, man, man. A big thank you goes to our podcast's founding sponsors, the Peppermaster, the Miss B Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have a Friday morning bite for you. It's going to be a little bit of potpourri of various things for you this morning, kids and cubs. But before we go any further, let's do the most important thing we do on the show every day, and that's say hello to you, Mr. Grizzly, and ask you how your mental health is doing today, sir. Well, good morning, Mr. Grizzly Beaver. Wow. There See? you go. See? Yeah. Neither one of us are it. in it's gear. It's contagious. <laughs> Neither one of us are in gear this morning. Uh, um, uh, I, I'm, um, you know what? I'm in great spirits this morning. I'm in really good spirits this morning because I'm, I'm fired up and ready to fight back. Uh, I don't know if you saw a couple of the things I tweeted yesterday, but, um, and, and as you would have noticed in the write-up for the show, I've, I've noticed uh, a change in the tide. Uh, of, you know, the, the average Canadian who is tired of, you know, the, the lies and the rhetoric and the, and the, the gaslighting and, and the bullshit and people are united and, and people are ready to start fighting back because they're just tired of it all. And that gives me hope and it really lifts my spirits because, you know, for a while we felt like we were shouting into the void, but we're not anymore. People are starting to pay attention. And the whole purpose of this, the whole reason we started this was to keep Canadians informed, give you the facts and the truth. We will give you our opinion, but yeah. our opinion is never a fact. And when we do stress that, facts first. I will, I will editorialize, 
but we're going to give you the straight goods first. And people are, are coming to recognize that they've been lied to by, you know, American-owned evangelical right-wing Christo-fascist hedge fund. <laughs> I won't go on a diatribe, but uh, people are tired of it and starting to fight back. And I think 2024 is the year when the tide changes. Mm-hmm. I really do. And it yep. gives me so much hope and strength and it really does renew my faith in humanity. I think we're going to be okay, but we still got a bit of an uphill battle. Oh yeah. There's work to do. There is work to do. And, and the thing is be ever vigilant. Democracy is something you do and you have to do it every day. You can't, you can't sit back and just let somebody else take care of it. You have to contribute. Now, how you contribute is up to you, but you have to contribute because mm-hmm. it's, there's no free ride for anybody. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very true. Um, I, I have the, the same help. I, I've been noticing a, t- a turning of the tide as well, actually, uh, especially online. Um, yes, there's especially online. Yeah. There's only so long you can sustain rage. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one of these marketing things, for example, you know, when um, fear is a good marketing campaign. So, for example, you know, smoking cessation. Mm-hmm. For example, you know, don't smoke, you know, if you do this, don't smoke, if you do if this will happen, this will happen. And then there's some people that, you know, the message is effective for a while and then it wears off because the worst thing doesn't happen to you. So you have less reason to fear it. And then, I mean, or these are things that happen to someone else or not me. I don't smoke that much or, you know, or whatever, or I can stop anytime or mm-hmm. when, and then you just keep smoking and it's the same thing. There's only so much you can ratchet up fear before you realize that the worst thing on earth hasn't happened. So, I mean, there's only so long that Pierre Polyev and his merry gang of, well, bear, merry dour and sour gang of shit gibbons can tell people Canada is broken and we're going to hell in a handbasket and it doesn't actually happen before people yeah. start. Um, I thought you said he was a dictator. Like when's the, when, when's yeah. the autocracy coming? Because it's been, You've been saying this like for six years now. and well, I love it yeah. when the authoritarian calls the prime minister an authoritarian. <laughs> really? Well, that, that's Gables, How right? How stupid do you think we are? That's right out of Gables. So Yeah, yeah. Right. So, I mean, th- these these are all plays that we see before. There's nothing original in what nope. this group is doing. What's original is the technology. Yeah. And the and pace and the frequency. It. Well, and, and you know, the same thing could be said for, for 1929 Germany. And I say uh-huh. 1929 because, you know, the Beer Hall Putsch and so on. They used the, the then media, radio and newspapers, to manipulate the people. They're just using new media today, but they have more tools, uh, deeper de- data mining. They have the ability to reach more hu- of humanity because now you can be reached no matter where you are. Mm-hmm. Who do you know? Do you know anyone who doesn't own a phone or at least have an internet connection in their home? Do you know anyone? Because I don't. Yeah. I'm sure there's a few people. There's definitely a few people. My dad doesn't have a cell phone, but my mom does. My mom has a smartphone. My dad has a laptop and a tablet. So, right? Right. right. Still is reachable. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. My dad's 82 years old. He has a, a beautiful iPad. My sister and brother-in-law gave him for his birthday, his 80th birthday, and he's got a really nice laptop that I helped pick out for him. I didn't pay for it. He bought it himself, but he wanted my input. So, you know, you can be reached anywhere on earth, and the thing that people fail to understand is how easily they can use your own data to manipulate you and steer you down the path they want you to go down, and you don't even know what's happening. You mm-hmm. don't even know what's happening. And when I say I feel that the tide is turning... I had a conversation yesterday with a gentleman who was, uh, I'm not going to say what he was doing, but he was doing some, some construction type work. And, and we had a chat about, you know, I used to do a lot of that too. My body's too broken. I can't do it anymore. I'm too tired and I like what I'm doing now. And, you know, I love where I'm working. And, and, uh, and he's, he's an immigrant from Ireland. He's been here for almost 20 years now. And we were having a chat about how he, he came to the conclusion that, look, there's, there's a lot of problems here in this country. Yes. And we're working to try and solve them. He says, sometimes I'm wondering if I should move back home to Ireland because when I see, you know, friends of mine who are, are buying homes, he goes, I can't buy a home here. I go, yeah, that's pretty rough. Uh, he says, but it's not the prime minister's fault. And I went, oh, he goes, 
price of groceries aren't his fault either. I mean, he, uh, we didn't even go there. He took the conversation in that direction, and I was like, really? He goes, look, I'm not an idiot. I know that there's complications in this world. I know there's problems, but they aren't, they aren't the fault of the Prime Minister of Canada. I'm like, wow, this, this guy's got his stuff together, man. I think I, I, you know, it's one of those moments where people are starting to get the truth. Well, I, I think the thing is, is that if you live in Canada and if you've been here for a while, the division of powers in the Constitution, you know that provinces are responsible for health care and education specifically. The other things mm -hmm. people are maybe less aware, but healthcare and education, I mean, that's its big thing, right? I think it's section 91, 92. And they always get taught about all the time, all the yes. time. And there's only so many years in a row that hospitals can be at over 120% capacity. There's only so much time that you can have your cancer treatments delayed, or it takes you so much longer to get a diagnostic test or kids are having trouble, you know, reintegrating back into regular school life after two or three years of COVID before you realize, or houses don't get built before you realize it can't be the problem of just one man. And I do seriously believe that the concept that our premiers, for the most part, we have a couple of good ones, but our premiers are the problem. Yep. Starts to sink yep. in. I'm thinking of Pam from from uh, office, uh, what, the office. Yep. Right. I mean, the prime minister is not responsible for absolutely everything. Well, Pierre Polyev would have you think he is. Well, yes. Including global inflation and the price of gas and your groceries and the except whole, the thing, uh, price except of the things that go well, right? Yes. Remember all the yelling and screaming they did for passports. Well, now you can get your passport mm -hmm. again at the same time as usual. All yeah. the problems with airports, well, that seems to not no longer be an issue. And, yeah. well, if those problems no longer exist, who solved them? Oh, it wasn't him. No, no, no. It was private industry that did it. But it was his fault that private industry screwed up, according to the conservatives. Or the Reform Party, I should say. It's, it, like, it's just... The mental gymnastics that they have to do to try and get their bullshit across because it's bullshit. I had a conversation. Remember when they talked about the, uh, back a few months ago when they talked about the, uh, the truck tax? You know, when you're going to, if you're going to buy a, a big truck, you're going to pay an extra tax or extra fee on mm -hmm. it. And in the Ottawa Sun, they had people convinced that. If you bought anything, any kind of vehicle, you're going to pay an extra ten thousand or fifteen thousand dollars on the price of it. And uh, so my dad tells me about this, and he's really mad. He goes, "The goddamn liberals!" And this is. And I go, "Let me take a look at this, Dad." And I got back to him, and I go, "Yeah, here's the thing. What they didn't tell you in that article in the Ottawa Sun, which is, we can dig it up and show it to you. We're not making this up." I said, "What they didn't tell you in that article was these are for big gas guzzler." $150,000 plus vehicles, mm -hmm. number one. And this uh, tax was brought about by Stephen Harper's government, originally suggested a bunch of years ago. He goes, what? So I laid it all out and showed it to him, and he goes, those sons of bitches, they're lying to me. I go, I'm telling you, Dad, this is the right-wing-owned American corporation that wants to steer you in the direction they want you to go. They're going to tell you what they want you to hear. They're not giving you facts. Almost everything in that newspaper is editorial. Oh, yeah. There's almost zero facts. Yeah. And come after us. We'll, we'll just go and prove it to you with your own product. Right, <laughs> right. And hence the resorting to starting to quote the CBC all over again. To yeah. prove their points. Yeah. Like, if you can't even quote your own paper to make your point... <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it says something about your paper. You Just think? saying. Uh, good morning to Kit Dan, to Kit Cassie, who's joining us, who are joining us today, to Kit Hugh. Yes, finally got snow in Lakefield. Feels like early November. <laughs> Indeed. Mm -hmm. Kit, oh, this is a new name, I think, for us. No, well, it says Damn Fam, so maybe not. But Sean, I don't remember seeing this name. 
Sean Romanko, but uh, thank you so much for hey, joining Sean, us. Welcome to the show. Um, but if, you, if it fam. says to, if there's a hashtag damn fam, that might just be a new name for a, a frequent flyer. So let's say here, uh, Kit Mohan and all family. Hello, hello. I hope Mateo is feeling better. Kit Tavi G, welcome. Oh, I have something. To Hold show on a second, Kit Saucy. We have to say hello to everybody that came up to, came up to join us oh, this morning. No, keep going. Uh, let's see. Let's go through the list. Still, the the chat is already very, very, very active. Miss Sedeka Douglas, did you find the fountain of youth? You look radiant and at least ten years younger. It's got to be the hair, freshly conditioned, my dear. Freshly conditioned. Look at that. It just. Oh, I have to do it on this side. It just falls through my fingers. <laughs> Kit Hugo's it's because he hangs with me. <laughs> that, that is true. <laughs> that must absolutely be it. See who else do we have here? Wow, really active. There's so much. I'm I think we're already cycling through. That's crazy. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of comments. Okay. Well, wonderful. That's everybody we have with us today. They're just very, very active. Somebody's talking about pancakes, though. And uh, yes, I agree with you, Dan. Mmm, pancakes. Uh, and Mo Kit Mullen says, your hair is looking fantastic as well, Paul. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you very much. I, uh... <laughs> Um, I'm wondering if that I, thing you want to talk to me I about, do what I can. Or if you want to talk to me about, if you can hold it for one second, because we were talking about things that were going well. I, 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 yes. I asked no, 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 this is, you love this. Well into it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, no, you're Fine. going to love this. Yeah, you're going to love this. I just got to find where I saved it. <laughs> I can't find it. Hang on a second. All right. Well, you know what? Let's... Here's what I'll do. I'll share, I'll share the image with you instead. Hang on. I got it. I got it. Let's just uh, do this and then I'll scroll up. And here we go. You're going to love this. So um, I sent some stuff to Mateo. Oh. So he's got his stickers. Yay. I told you you'd love it. And he says, Mateo got your stickers today. I've been finding them all over the house. He decided to redecorate a few things, but I made it. But it made him so happy. So thank you. We shared a sheet of stickers with his friend, uh, Harper, and I told her mom about the podcast. Hopefully she will join us one day. Anyway. Thanks again. You guys are the most fantabulous duo around. That was from Miss Sedeka. See, I told you you'd like it. Oh, I am melting. <laughs> I am melting. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, you know, we have been getting a lot of love online, particularly mm. the last few weeks. Uh, th there's been a huge uptick in the sharing of our episodes. But, and not just like sharing or reposting, but reposting with comments, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. adds so much value. Oh, my goodness, yes. It so much value. Like, um, so, I mean, it, it warms my heart every time because I, 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 I know I should get over it at some point like this and just accept uh, the fact that people find value and it was what we do, but I'm still surprised. Oh, that part. That yeah, so many yeah, people I've... want want to hear what we want to say. And at some point, I'm. It's, it's like that Taylor Swift video. Look what you made me do at the end when, when she has like all the versions of Taylor, and she's mm -hmm. like, oh, "Oh, stop crying! You can't be that surprised all the time." <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, I love K. Come on, I mean, who's kidding? Ah, me too. But uh, so yeah, I eventually, eventually, it will sink in kids uh, but i'm I, i'm loving it i'm really yeah. loving it so um thank you very much uh but yeah i, I was going to go someplace but since the conversation went this way uh there was a thread i saw just before christmas it was on new year's eve actually from a gentleman named tyler meredith now vice is on the table for mm -hmm. mr meredith past head of fiscal and economic policy for Canada and Canada's PM and ministers of finance, Justin Trudeau, Christian okay. Freeland, and Bill Bornell. So a liberal. Yeah, but clearly a liberal. Right? Okay. That, that, that's all right. But Put that out, out, in the, out on the table so that everybody is well aware. Yes. But he has this wonderful tweet thread. Uh, I'll share it on the screen in mm -hmm. case people want to read along. It says, 
It's popular to dunk on government, especially the federal government, who some don't think do big things well. These views have limited basis. In fact, there are lots of areas for improvement, but you'd be surprised at how well the federal government does on some things. Here's a thread. If you traveled this year, you have about a 90% chance of getting through airport security in less than 15 minutes. At most of the year, the hardworking staff at CATSA actually exceed their service standard. He's got a graph. Because we like data. We love data. And you can see, yes, you know, in the summer, it's a little rougher. But whoops, look at since September, best performance consistently since the beginning of the year. And getting better. The trend nice. is your friend. Mm -hmm. If you're a business who relies on moving goods across the border, for example, at Windsor, Canadian Border Services met their service standard for processing at highway ports of entry nearly 100% of the time last year. That's a massive advantage for economy, especially thanks to NAFTA. And again, we have data. Percentage of time the CBSA met commercial highway borders wait time service standard, at least 90% in March 2023. Percentage of eligible release decisions provided within established time frames, at least 70%. March 2023, actual availability of single window as a percentage of planned availability at last at least 99%, March 2023. Uh, there are more data columns here on this side, but unfortunately, we don't have the headers. So I can't tell you specifically what oh, they, they don't. Mean. They don't show them at the top either? Oh, no. no. That's, yeah, it's just a grab here. Yeah. I would see... I'd really like to know what the headers would be for that because me too. I would have included that there. It could have been ninety nine point four percent failure rate of technology. I think you know, we don't know exactly, and, so and that's the difference between to that. that's the difference between a communications person and a policy wonk. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's early December, and you've got a holiday plan down south. Thanks to Passport Canada, you have a near one hundred percent chance you'll get a critical document within two weeks or less, or even a day turnaround if you pay. Apart from COVID, this has been true for years. This is true. When we're preparing your holiday, when you're preparing, when you were preparing your holiday meal, you used food inspected by the inspect the Canadian Food Inspection Agency. Thanks to their work, nearly 100% of animal inputs and products to our food system met key safety standards. That matters to us as consumers, but it also opens huge export opportunities. And again, more data. If you received or sent parcels or cards, chances, it chances are it was delivered by Canada Post or Purolator. More than 6.5 billion items were moved in 2022 by our postal workers. Postal services, postal services changing and needs to change, but Canadians get a great service. Despite what you hear from some, the vast, vast majority of federal labor disputes in Canada, from ports to trains to telecom providers, are resolved without any action. That's thanks to federal mediators at the labor program. That helps workers and creates confidence. When you file your tax return, it will be processed nearly instantly. Under 50% will qualify for, sorry, that's over, greater than 50% will qualify for a refund, and you'll get it within a couple of weeks. The Canadian Revenue Agency is a leader in IT and technology among the biggest computing power in government. Nearly 30 million electronic returns done. And of course, if you needed an emergency benefit in the pandemic, the Canadian Revenue Agency propped us all up, delivering hundreds of billions of income support to people and businesses in your bank account quickly, which meant Canada bounced back faster and better than most countries. Defense procurement. It gets crapped on for a lot of reasons, mostly because we think about it as a few big projects in the headlines. And yet, most procurement is lots of small stuff, and most of the time it is done well and on time. You won't hear that in the news. And here... Target at least 100%, actual result 95.6. And the target they set was at least 100%. Yeah, at least 100%. 95. 95.6% is pretty damn good. Yeah. There are lots of areas where we need government service to de delivery to be better, faster, more nimble. Registration of benefits, ER, EI onboarding and records of employment, Phoenix Pay System. But the federal government delivers lots of key services and mostly well. Could you um, send me that, a link to that, please? Absolutely. I can and just share it with me. Do that. I'm just, just wondering if there's another tweet there left in the thread. If I forgot. Nope, that was the end of the thread. Well, and that leads me to what I'm about to show you. But how refreshing, right, to hear about things that are going well. 
Yes. So let me let me show you this. Um, so I'm not going to show this person's name. Um, her name is Karen, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> C. Pierre Polyev's plan. It's it's a response to a tweet. Here's the tweet. Start showing me how they are going to do this. It's pretty easy to make a claim. I mean, that is all PP has done up to this point. His plan for housing was debunked in 40 seconds. So you can scratch that one off the list already. Let's see something tangible. Uh, it's just why. Is Pierre Polyev the PM? Has Trudeau called an election? It's not Polyev's job to state his plan. It's his job to show where the government is failing. And Trudeau has definitely been keeping Pierre busy. No. Failing, keeping him busy because of all the failing? Is that what you're implying? Canada is number two in the world. Canada has a triple A credit rating. Canada has the lowest debt to GDP ratio in the G8. Canada has the second strongest economy in the world. Failing? Hmm. So then let's just scroll down. And of course, it's not Polyev's job to state his plan. PP is running a campaign to become PM. People need to know what they are voting for. They need to know why he's keeping his cards close to his chest. Do some research into Stephen Harper, would you? Because, well, why is that? Oh, hang on, I got why is he pulling all why well do some research into Stephen Harper because he's pulling all the strings let's go back here and scroll down a little bit further where you can see uh well, that's an ad and i don't know where it went <sighs> of course it's lost <laughs> oh no <laughs> i'm trying to prove a point and i lost it oh wait here it is there it is yeah so uh, so there's this, and then we scroll to this. Freeland must be your mama. The only thing higher in taxes and inflation in Canada are the idiots who think Trudeau is doing a good job. To which I responded, see, the thing about your meme, we don't think he's doing a good job. The metrics show that he is. Facts don't care about your feelings. Until such time as, I'm missing an S, as any conservative can counter this argument with facts, not opinions, you should remain quiet on this. It's true. And also, what, what was the starting premise of that, that the leader of the opposition's job is not to show plans, but to point out where the government's... No. Well... No. So no, no. No, no. That's, that's not correct. That's not correct. And opposition is there to oppose and propose. Mm -hmm. Oppose well, and, and, here's what, and propose. Here's the starting thread. I'll read it to you. From Karen. I'm not giving you... A, face or a name or anything. I'm just Karen. What do I think will happen when Pierre Polyev is PM? One, our economy will improve. Two, carbon tax will be axed. Three, homes will become affordable. Four, food will be affordable. Five, ethics will return. Six, crime rates will drop. Seven, maid will not be free for all. Not be a free for all. Eight, parents will raise their own children. Nine, common sense will return. Ten, most of the liberals' policies gone, as will most liberals be, including hopefully Freeland, who, like Trudeau, has helped to destroy Canada. This is what started it, and his response from this fellow was, okay, start showing me how they're going to do this. But I'm like, what? She's not, none of that makes a lick of sense, what that nope. woman wrote. Nope. None of it. No, none it's of it. all just sloganeering. Nothing more. What Houses will become affordable. Please how? explain to me how they're going to do that. Unless the federal government starts building even more houses and takes over the bulk of construction in Canada for home building, houses will not become more affordable. And it's as even, simple as that. Even if they did, you need the bodies and the equipment and the actual material resources to, to build, them. build all those houses. You know, the same thing is happening when we're talking about nursing and whatnot. If Ontario shorts 22,000 nurses, it's not like you tap somebody on the shoulder, wave a magic wand, you get 22,000 nurses. Nurses go through four to seven years of training. Exactly. Well, and here, let's, let's, let's go further with that one then, sir. Let's go down this road. So then you have the people going, well, we got to build more houses. We have a housing problem and, and houses and there's a provincial resp responsibility. Well, why'd the federal government make immigration so high? We are lacking 22,000 nurses. We don't have enough bodies to meet timelines on any construction project in Canada, period. End of story. How do I know this? I don't know, 29 years work in construction, seeing that every project over the last 15 to 20 years has run over, over time, over budget, because they don't have enough skilled tradespeople to do the job. But hey, let's keep immigration low to solve our housing crisis. Yeah, well, how about we start... Oh, I don't know. Looking at some of the 60 and 70 story skyscrapers in downtown Toronto that are mostly empty most of the time when they're not being uh, rented out as Airbnbs. 
those are all foreign owned, by the way, for the most part. Yep. This is not a fantasy. This has been documented and proved multiple times. Stephen Punwasi uh, wrote a, an entire, damn near a thesis on this, proving how most of those empty condos are, that are being occasionally rented out as Airbnbs are just largely for money laundering. I'm not making it up. It's not a fantasy. It's not a conspiracy. It's all been proven. I'll right. have to find the documentation. And it is out there. I have read it. I need to find it. And I'll post links to it in a, in a later show because I won't have time to do it while we're doing this show. But yep. this is all, you know, it's all part and parcel. It, it we have, is. It's not that we have a housing problem. It, it is. There is a housing problem, yes. But that's not all of the problem. We have millions of homes that are owned by people who don't live in them, who rent them out on a nightly basis to different people. And I get yeah. it. You want to make some extra money, but they need to change the rules like they did in New York City. You want to have an Airbnb? You have to live in the dwelling. But I don't want strangers in my home. Well, well then you don't bad. want an Airbnb. Too bad. That's the rule. You're not a hotel. You're not a hotel. Yeah. 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 It's the and this issues. is coming from New York City, the center of capitalism on planet Earth. Right? Right. The center of capitalism is right. saying, okay, no more of this crap. Right. So that should tell you something. It, it's a supply side issue. Yes, it is. It's a supply side issue. And you need bodies here. We're remembering during the time of COVID, hardly anybody immigrated. Yeah. Oh, numbers were the lowest they'd ever been, I think, in like 50 years or something yeah. like that. During that time, people still retired. Mm -hmm. People still yeah. died. A lot of yeah. people died. Those things happen. There were a lot of jobs that needed to be filled. Like I said, people retrained. They had opportunities. A lot of people left the service industry. A lot of people. There's only a few years before all of the boomers are out of the workforce. The boomers didn't have Gen X, which is what we are. They didn't have nine, 10 yeah. kids. If you knew a family with five, that was yeah. huge when we were children. And, and there's a reason why we're giving more healthcare delivery to nurse practitioners and pharmacists and whatnot, because we have all these people that are retiring who need more health services. The older you get, the more health Simple services you get, and we don't have the bodies to provide them. And since we're not, again, our premiers are not boosting the number of places in medical schools to meet the future demand, and since they've refused for the better part of the last two decades to make sure that we had the housing, and since, again, at the provinces, uh, the ministers of colleges and universities have been bringing in students by the boatload to help fund the universities without giving them a budget for student housing. And then we have all those mm. skippy air quote colleges that offer no, useless hates, diplomas he, he that bring colleges. people in and have but no place colleges. to house them as well. Yeah. You know, because I, I told you the story that my beaver sweetie, you know, where he's teaching at an actual college mm -hmm. about people that are here from other countries who are working and are being so exploited by their workers, mm -hmm. their employers, that they're not being freed up to actually go to class or even write their exams. That's a problem. Well, they spent twelve, thirteen, fourteen thousand dollars. Mm-hmm. And can't even show up to their exam. Yeah. You're not supposed to be working full time. You're here to well, go to school full time. Remember a, a few years back, if you were a foreign student, you weren't even allowed to hold a job. Unless it was on campus. That's right. And because of the shortage, the foreign students that we had that were here, because they couldn't mm. also go back during COVID, because of travel, right. we increased the number of hours that they could work. And now mm -hmm. that's being reduced, right? With the policy that, well, 
foreign students that coming here now have to show that there's more money in their bank account than that they had before to show that they have the money to be able to sustain themselves without having to work a full-time job while studying full-time. Mm -hmm. All of this is provincial. All of it. All of it. All of it. They whine and cry about the immigration numbers are too high, and then they whine and cry about how we don't have enough nurses or doctors or frontline workers or construction or tradespeople. Which is it? Make a goddamn decision. Yep. It, you can't complain about two things that complement one another. <laughs> we need more people. Not that many. Well, then what would you like us to do? Yeah. Yep. Why don't we just close the borders to everybody? Yeah. Oh, including Canadians. You can't come in, you can't leave. Yeah, indeed. Would, would that fix it? Would that make you happy? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to that point, Mr. Grizzly, um, the, mm. I've sent you a couple of links there in the, the private chat. Yep. Um, but just but the latest one I've sent you, the, the third one, mm -hmm. let's go to that one okay. first. Because okay. uh, earlier this week, we were talking about the Prime Minister's year-end interviews. Again, I need to issue mm -hmm. self-correction to, to myself. I did mention that he gave one to CTV. Upon further inspection, the one that popped up was the one from last year. So there was not one to CTV this year. I do not know if CTV didn't ask for one because he seemed to have oh. gone everywhere. He accepted globally, accepted City TV, and he accepted CBC. I do not know why he would not accept CTV. So I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know if they decided not to do one. But I listened to uh, a few more of them. And the one from City TV was particularly interesting because he was interviewed by two people uh, because it was City and Omni Television who put their resources okay. together. Now, I'm not sure if Omni TV is fully Omni national. Omni is owned by Rogers, I believe. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's fully national. Uh, but, City is owned by Bell Globe Media, though, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I, I would assume that Omni is... Oh, yeah. Omni is Rogers Sports, Sports Media. City, I'd have mm -hmm. to look. That's yeah, Rogers. I'd have to look. City, I'm, I'm sure, is owned by Bell, which would be CTV. No, Rogers as well. Rogers owns City? Yep. Since when? That's new. Uh, I think it may have been when uh, sometimes when there's a merger, uh, the uh, regulator decides that some certain sections have to be carved off. Can't go because it would that be would too make much sense, of a concentration. Though, because I, I couldn't see Rogers and Bell sitting at the same table to conduct an interview. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, but Omni Television is a, for those who don't know, has a special focus on the multi-ethnic community within Canada. See, this is where I got it confused. Thanks, Dan. Uh, CP24. City is Rogers, Bell Media is CP24. CP24. And they used to be together. I think City and CP24. Yes, CP24, and, and that's right, they were. So that, I guess that was the carve off. Okay, thanks, Dan. Appreciate that. Yep. So this one was very interesting because you had two perspectives in this interview. Um, don't know if I gave you the time step. No, I did not give you the time not step. Not for the city, for the no. city one. I have the time step for the other one, but I don't have it for this yeah. one. So for city, I'd like to go to the time stamp. Uh, let's see. It's in my drafts. Three minutes and 21. Where? 321. Yes. Yeah, I can do that where there's, uh, they're going to discuss housing and immigration. And we will let it run from 321 to 1230. So it's going to be a long segment. Okay. Um, That'll give me a chance to grab a coffee. <laughs> okay. Don't go too long, though, because there are things here that you no, really, no, really, really should hear. No. I'm, I'm 50 seconds to grab my coffee. Not even a minute. Now, the thing with this, if you watch the whole interview, which is really interesting, is that there are two people doing the interview, one from City, one from Omni. The guy from City, a couple of times, was a bit of a dick, mm -hmm. I have to say. Uh, you'll see one of the instances in this clip, and then in another one, when he's about to ask his final question, he goes, uh, so let's talk about leadership. Yours hasn't been very good. And then he asks the question. So twice he editorialized in a manner that was rather dismissive and insulting. And the prime minister did not take him up on it. I would have said, whoa, 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 there. But he did not. The person who is interviewing from Omni 
did a mm-hmm. fantastic job, asked wonderful okay. questions, asked interesting questions, asked questions I didn't hear on any other network. And the reason why I say the guy from City was a bit of a dick is because we saw the interview with Rosie Barton. Mm-hmm. Right? And a lot of people didn't like the fact that she pressed or asked the question about his, you know, how his personal life had personal affected life. this year. Yeah. But she did so in a journalistic fashion. When she pressed, it was a she pressed yeah. in a journalistic fashion. She got she Correct. challenged the statement and got the prime minister to defend it to see if it would withstand the pressure. This well, as as I stated at the time, I didn't like the question, but it was legitimate. Yes. And the way she the way she constructed it was legitimate, a journalistic. Qu- I didn't like it, but I'm not always going to like everything anybody has to say anyway, right? So. Yeah, but it wasn't sensationalistic, and it wasn't no, trying it to wasn't. get to get a gotcha, right? It was no, it wasn't at all. It really wasn't. It was a fair, it was a fair question, and it was legitimate. Yeah. Now, in this one, the first question that that's going to come in this segment is going to be from him. The rest is her. Okay. But when he ends well, the question... I want to see this whole thing, so can you wax on for a few yes. seconds while I grab yes, a coffee? Yes. I desperately need one. Thanks, okay. I'll be right back. <laughs> I believe now I have to... You know how it is. I need, I need the coffee. I need the coffee. You need the coffee. Okay. We get some coffee, we'll talk. All right. Well, since I am stretching, uh, a little bit of personal use, uh, the rehearsals for As You Like It have started. We had our first two. We haven't done anything really intense yet. The first one was sort of like a meet and greet and get everybody to sign their paperwork and explain the philosophy behind it. Because, you know, when you take on a Shakespeare, it can be intimidating. And it's not like everybody in the cast is people that have been extremely familiar with Shakespeare who have done it all their lives. So uh, we went through the process and what the attitude is. Also, ours is going to be a more modern take on it. So it's not going to be all um, poetry. It's going to be a little bit more prose to the way it's uh, it's delivered. But yesterday we did the read through all, all together. We got together and read through it all. And I have to say, just based on the read through, I think we might have something going on that will be really good. The director held a long series of auditions to make sure he had the right people. Cause often we just do two or three days and we take what we get from there. But, uh, he, when he didn't quite have the right fit, he went and looking in various different places to make sure he got what he needed. And, um, wow. Just based on the first read through, we might have something. And it's very rare you get that sense right from the read through. Usually you're a couple of weeks into it and you go, oh, I think we have a show here. But there is so much talent in that cast. And particularly the newer actors or the ones who are newer to Shakespeare, I don't know how much research they did over the holidays because a lot of them had their scripts before we gave them to them. But they came prepared. So I am very, very impressed because I'm wearing two hats, right? I'm in it. I have one scene specifically, but I'm co-producing this with two other people. And I have to say, I'm excited. I'm excited. This could, this could be very, very good. So away from the personal note, I don't know if you've got it queued up, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah, I'm ready to roll, sir. All right, so the first bit is him, and you will see um, how he tries to move from how we how pay attention to how he moves from the subject of housing to his next subject, and how rude and dismissive it is. Okay, here we go. To push on them, yes. All right, now on housing, uh, you know, throughout the fall, we've seen a series of measures. However, this housing crisis has been brewing for many years. Experts, even the leader of the, the opposition, have been calling. Sorry, you didn't government. just call it the leader of the opposition an expert, no. did you? Because <laughs> what we're seeing from him is nothing but But, but they've smoke been calling for more action for some mm-hmm. time. Did you act too late to try and address this crisis and take a more concerted effort on this? Well, actually, what's interesting is the leader of the opposition, the Conservatives, have voted against 
our housing measures. They voted against cutting the GST uh, on rental construction. They voted against our rapid housing initiative. Just this week, uh, I was here in Toronto with an announcement that covers uh, in uh, a building that we is being constructed uh, that we devoted a hundred million dollars in financing to. So that's concrete, but that started years ago to make an announcement of $471 million more for Toronto to continue to accelerate densification, to build more housing faster, and to change the way we build housing here in Toronto and across the country. There is lots more to do, but we started this in 2017 with a national housing strategy that reversed all the inaction that happened when Pierre Polyev was housing minister under the Conservatives, and they didn't get any housing built. But the efforts as well, uh, 3.5 million homes uh, need to be built by 2030, according to the CMHC. This is kind of a drop in the bucket. But moving on, uh, your own government is trying to boost immigration levels to even further record levels at a time where we are dealing with this housing crisis. Could this just compound the problem? Let's be very careful about how we talk about immigration because there's a number of different pieces in that I think it's really important for people to understand. First of all, yes, we're increasing our immigration levels up to uh, close to half a million people because we need to be bringing people into this country to continue uh, to create the incredible diversity and economic success that uh, immigrants bring. There are three categories outside of that that have seen a massive spike over the past years. One is irregular asylum seekers, and we have to make sure we're working with international partners to make sure that the people who arrive here irregularly um, you know, reduce in numbers. The second part is international students. Over the past two years, we've seen hundreds of thousands more international students than ever before, some of them showing up uh, to places that aren't real schools of education and with terrible consequences for them, but also almost all of them showing up and having to find their own housing. And that puts pressure on communities around everywhere. So what we've actually done is demanded that if the federal government is going to approve international students coming in, the educational institutions need to make sure they're doing their job to make sure there's housing available for those international students. And the third area uh, is temporary workers, that we need to grow the economy. But if a company needs to bring in a temporary worker uh, to, uh, to, to do a job that Canadians can't or won't do, they have to be more responsible for finding, finding housing. So I don't like the fact that people are setting immigration against housing because that's not the full story, but there are specific problems that have cropped up in the past couple of years that we are directly leaning in to address to keep Canadians' confidence strong in our world-class immigration system and in the incredible advantage it is to bring people into Canada from around the world. On the subject... Well... Now, you'll notice that the journalist did a couple of things there, and you'll notice that when they zoomed into him, he did not look pleased. One, when he tried to try to give some credit to Podiev, the Prime Minister shut that down. And as the Prime Minister was shutting that down, he didn't like that, so he interrupted the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. moved the subject on. And then when the Prime Minister talked about what he was doing with housing and said that he's been in it since 2017, he dismissed it as, well, it's just a drop in the bucket, but moving on to. He wanted... Super fast, not time. giving him a chance to respond. Yeah. Compare and contrast to how Rosemary Barton asked her questions. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? And when she interrupted to challenge her to push. Yeah. That's the difference between good journalism and bad journalism. That's the difference between journalism that's applying pressure to get to see if somebody's answer withstands to pressure and journalism that had an agenda. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, the lady who's asking the questions, I wish that the names would have had appeared on the bottom of the screen on the, in the clip because I, I would love to give her credit. Um, watch how she asks her questions. Okay. Let's have a look. Compared to him. Let's have a look. So just go back a couple I, of I, seconds. I've, I've got it. I've already done that. Yeah. Don't worry. All right, All right. Here we go. People into Canada from around the world. On the subject of immigration, Prime Minister, last month Omni News conducted a poll with Leger, which particularly surveyed immigrants. Two in five say they are struggling to make ends meet. But 
seven in ten believe Canada doesn't have a proper settlement plan for these uh, immigrants. How can we sustain record increase of immigration when we're hearing them say there isn't enough support? Well, that's, and that's exactly something that we are very concerned about because immigration to Canada has always gone hand in hand with integration. Canada's the country in which the largest proportion of people coming to this country as immigrants actually become full citizens and that's been one of the success of, successes of Canada. So again, we're increasing our immigration levels to uh, 500,000 a year, which is responsible and fine. It's the temporary immigrants that have spiked massively over the past couple of years that is putting so much pressure on the whole system. And that's where, whether it's uh, temporary, foreign uh, temporary foreign workers, international students, uh, or asylum seekers, uh, we're putting in place measures uh, to both better support and to keep those numbers at manageable levels so the people who come as immigrants or in family reunification uh, can make sure they're getting the best success. We at Omni, we have spoken to too many immigrants. They're saying they're working multiple jobs, sometimes 20 hours a day just to be able living here. Looking at our survey, quarters say this country has fallen short of their expectations. How do you, what's your message to them? Uh, the message is we understand being able to afford a home especially is the biggest challenge that so many people are facing. Rents are going way up, uh, the cost of mortgages, being able to buy your own home, it seems out of reach, particularly uh, for young people and new Canadians. That's why we have embarked upon one of the biggest home building projects in Canadian history. We've done this before. We've solved it before. At the end of World War II, we had to build record numbers of homes uh, for all the soldiers coming home and their families. We're going to do it again, and that's why an announcement of $471 million for Toronto this week, a similar hundreds of millions of dollars announcement for Vancouver last week, more money that we're putting in to not just build more homes, but to change the way we build homes and where we build them so that we can actually solve this problem. Because success and prosperity in Canada comes through having a safe place to call home. That's what our government is focused on. Let's talk about international students. Just before you came here, your immigration minister said, and I quote, we need to get the volumes coming in under control, particularly in areas where they're here on a fraudulent or abusive basis. And that we can expect further steps to curb that. What are those steps? First of all, recognizing that the, when the province uh, accredits those various institutions. It has to do the work to make sure that the uh, young people who pay thousands of dollars to come to Canada for a good education actually get that good education. There's too many people being taken advantage of and that means the province needs to be tougher on that accreditation. But more than that, if people come even to a great school and a, and a real school, um, they cannot just be unleashed onto the community to try and find a rental home, or a rental property. That's what's driving up the prices for them and for everyone. That's why one of the things we're going to look at before we authorize international students to come for next September is the institution needs to have a plan that is going to show that they can house, that there is affordable, supportive housing housing for those students. It's going to be a big change. We still want lots of international students to come, but we don't want that to be either driving people out of homes or driving rents up in a way that is unsustainable and quite frankly unfair both to those students and to the community that they're in. And for those who aren't here on fraudulent basis, the financial requirement for them to study here is more than doubling and yet the government is limiting the number of hours just to get by. Where is the disconnect here? Well, if someone's coming here to study for a, for a great Canadian education, they shouldn't be expected to have to work a full-time job of 40 hours a week. That's, that just doesn't make sense. You can't be a full-time student and have a full-time job. So by uh, raising the financial requirements, we can know that in, in, including with uh, the increase in cost of living that we've seen, uh, we needed to make sure that was kept up with because that number hadn't been raised in a long time. But the focus on studies won't be there if they're stressed and they're worrying about how to... But that's why we want to make sure that international students who come here 
do have the financial means to be able to study and not be stressed about money. So it was actually doing them a disservice to not require a high enough level of uh, money in their bank accounts for them to be able to be successful. They need to be able to benefit fully from this education. And if they don't have the financial means to do that, that's not doing them a service uh, and it's not doing our community and country a service. On the different journalistic styles. And you see how the Prime Minister's demeanor changed as well. He spoke slower, more calmly. She did push back like Rosie Barton did. Oh, yes. But what about this? And you could see whenever they had the shots of the two journalists, the long shot, this, how the other one, again, not impressed because he knew very clearly that the person beside him was doing a much better job than he did. <laughs> well, and let's... I'm just observing here. He's a white man, and she's a brown woman. A brown woman with an accent, which would lead me to believe that she wasn't born here. Could be completely wrong. Could be completely wrong. But I think that might have pissed him off, too. <laughs> she was way more competent. I'm just speculating. You tell me she if I'm wrong. To I, I, I can't tell you because I don't know. But, but what I do know is that one of these two committed journalism and the other did not. Indeed. And juxtaposition is sometimes the greatest revealer. Oh, yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Mm hmm. Fulsome answers. You know, and, you know, when she asks, that it's a legitimate question. Oh, yes. Right? If what if people are stressed because they don't have enough money? He says, "Well, that's why we're asking for the amount of money they have coming in to be higher because we are doing them a disservice." And you saw the nod of agreement. That answer made sense, and you also see how he mentioned that provinces have certain responsibilities here that haven't been done, like for example, the accreditation of these institutions. The provinces, uh, the provinces, the premiers, and our provincial ministers, well, at least for Ontario, but I'm sure this is a similar, uh, similar in other provinces, ministers of colleges and universities have been giving accreditation to institutions that are not actually providing a useful education. We're not talking about the Algonquin Colleges and the St. Lawrence Colleges. No, no. We're talking about the other kinds, the sort of DeVry type ones. Fulsome answers, great questions, and because they came from someone from a diverse community, not the typical questions that we get in the year-end interviews. Specifically focused on that community, and he had answers. Well, and, and when you say... Um legit colleges and university well legit colleges versus questionable what was the the one that doug ford recently accredited his buddy was like a christian college in southern ontario oh yes yeah, yeah, yeah. That they don't i don't remember the name of that one. Yeah. i think they teach you that the world is six thousand years old and that jesus wrote a t-rex to school <laughs> yeah it's a what charles mcvitie's college. yes and i think that's what they're referring to without naming it directly but i could be wrong Canada Christian College. Yeah. 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 But also the ones, you know, sort of like come to this course, come to the school and learn to be a medical office assistant. You know, this, you, know, you can do it in, in a year or in two years and X number of thousand dollars a month. And, you know, and you can't find anything. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So those sort of professional development colleges, some of them are good, but some of them are, are rackets. They're just rackets. They're ways to get people in. Hey, there's you know, there's money for foreign exchange students. Let's create a program and let's say we're educating them on stuff. And these ones also tend to exploit single mothers or people. For example, people in the service industry yes. that are looking to upscale. I don't want to be server anymore, but hey, I could be a I could be a, an office assistant 
at a chiropractic's office, chiropractor's office. Where you get less guess, money. <laughs> but, you know, they teach you a couple of things like, oh, hip billing, mm-hmm. you know, and the typing skills and, and stuff. But does that really equip you? No. Or did you really, or could you just have gone to take a, ty- uh, you know, a typing course? A two-week course. At Algonquin Rather than College. a six or seven month. Right. I mean, legitimately, you could have gone to Algonquin College, a legitimate college that does teach you actual skills. I'm an alumni. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So these were good questions. This was good journalism. And I do like with the the first journalist as well, when he tried to bring in the immigration aspect, how the prime minister says, "Ah, be careful when you start talking about immigration associating. Yes. And he really spelled it all out. But why is, you know, mainstream media, this, this is, a, we get one example of this. One. one. And then we will hear PP go on all day long, day after day after day about, we're going to, we're going to bring housing home. Here's our plan. And I read their plan. It's not a plan. It's, it's not it's a, plan. a bunch of gibberish. It's not a plan. We're going to make houses no dates, more affordable. No we're going to build houses and make them more affordable. Okay, that's pie and in the sky. Much. That's lovely. That's a nice slogan. Tell me how that's you're going to do it. That's an objective. Pardon? That's an objective. It's not a plan. Tell me how you're going to do it. We're going to do it. And I'm going to go to the moon. But I don't have a plan. We'll axe the tax and we'll get it done. <laughs> uh, well, if you listen to the Bank of Canada, depending, guessing on how much uh, axing that tax is going to save you, I don't think you're going to be building, a, you're not going to be building a birdhouse with that money. Well, and it's already been proven that if you axe the tax, the majority of Canadians will be harmed by it. And the only people who will benefit, it are the, benefit from it are the wealthy and the super wealthy. So you yep. and I get screwed. Yep. Now let's uh, go to minute 1457 in the, that same interview. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, where we will be talking about, uh, start talking about foreign affairs. Here we go. Let's talk about the alleged murder plot linked to the Indian government. Nothing's been proven in court, but a U.S. indictment shows days before Hardeep Singh Nijar's murder in B.C., an undercover agent in the U.S. was told about a big target in Canada. Why couldn't we prevent Nijar's death? The responsibility of the Canadian government to protect all Canadians is exactly why we have been taking this so seriously from the very beginning. People come to this country from every corner of the world and they need to know when they are here they get to live freely as Canadians and hold the political views uh, and the freedom of speech and freedom of conscience that we guarantee in Canada that other parts of the world aren't always there for. So making sure we're doing everything possible to protect Canadian citizens will always be our guide, whether it was leading up to this or whether it's now as we deal with this very difficult time. We're going to continue to stand for the rule of law, for our Canadian values, and for the protection of all of our citizens. Why did you decide to go public in September with these allegations and what might be the repercussions for India here? Well, first of all, we uh, approached India as soon as we started to know about these allegations and started to draw these conclusions through intelligence and, and, and our understanding of things. We let the Indian government know right away that they needed to take this seriously. Unfortunately, they didn't. Uh, they engaged in an, a, a, a level of attacks against Canada. They arbitrarily kicked out 41 of our diplomats, which is really hard for the Indo-Canadian community that has so many ties and so many connections, not being able to deliver the services that connect our people, um, I think was a real mistake by India to, to violate the Vienna Convention and just choose to kick out 41 Canadian diplomats. But we want to be constructive. We want to be uh, you know, helpful in getting through this. So. While we cannot turn our backs on uh, such horrific potential violations of international law, of a Canadian citizen on Canadian soil uh, that a foreign government could have been involved in, we need to make sure that we're keeping Canadians safe. And that meant sharing with them 
what we knew, uh, sharing with the world our concerns, and allowing the proper authorities and proper processes to go through um, the, the, the necessary steps as a country with a robust justice system and a system of the rule of law uh, requires. About that? Sorry, I had muted us both. <laughs> no worries. But how about that? Yeah. Mm. Right. Sticking on the issue of foreign affairs, because I promised two kits after we looked at uh, the Prime Minister's year-end interview with CBC that we'd get back to that section. So uh, we'll go to that right away. Uh, the Prime Minister in this section talks about several things. Uh, I believe talks about China, I believe talks about Israel, and I believe India. Um, also talks about U.S., but I cut that part out because it was just about Trump and he gets enough uh, enough airtime anyway. So um, let's go to that, Mr. Grizzly. I believe you have the timestamp. Yeah, ready to go. All right. So this one's going to run for a few minutes, kids. Foreign policy, if I can. Uh, it was back in February of this year, a long time ago now, that The Globe first reported on CSIS intelligence memos uh, concerning foreign interference by China. At the time, you said uh, that there were inaccuracies in those reports. And yet, in spite of those concerns and the way that played out over six months, no one has been charged um, with leaking national security information. Do you expect that to happen? I certainly hope so. The integrity of our uh, intelligence services and, quite frankly, the well-being of people who put their lives at risk uh, around the world in some very dangerous places uh, is, is at risk every time there are leaks from our national security uh, framework. Do you have any indication it's going to happen? I know that work is, is ongoing right now, but obviously I'm not directly involved in yeah. it. It's, it's you know, very serious work being done by the RCMP and other uh, investigative bodies. Would an inquiry have happened if those leaks hadn't occurred? Um, I mean, probably not. The, the, we wouldn't have known those well, things. Well, the, the reality is we have very robust oversight mechanisms, including the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians, which we set up exactly for mm -hmm. those oversights so the politicians can raise the flag when things are going. We've been working on foreign interference since back in 2015 with elections oversight, with an election, uh, with uh, NSICOP, the Committee of Parliamentarians, with a rapid response mechanism at the G7 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that we created in 2018 when we hosted the G7. Um, we've been doing lots and we're going to continue to do lots and that's always been a part of it. You and your officials asked India to cooperate with the investigation into the murder of Hardeep Singh Nijar, the Canadian man that was killed um, in Vancouver in British Columbia. You, you've alleged that India is connected to the murder, as people know, but you have not said very much about how you know that. Is there anything more that you can say at this time about why you are so confident in those allegations? Um, it is a combination of things. It is intelligence that we've received, including from our allies. Uh, it is uh, investigative work being done in Canada that uh, gives us continued confidence in this. But we fundamentally, our role in this is to make sure we're able to keep Canadians safe. Canadians come to this country from every corner of the world, and they need to know that they can be safe mm -hmm. uh, in Canada with all the freedoms and liberties that we have here in Canada. And working with other countries like India to make sure that the mechanisms are in place to be accountable if something goes horribly wrong or if actions are taken like this uh, is really important. We don't want to be in a situation of having a fight with India right now over this. Uh, we want to be working on that trade deal. We want to be advancing our Indo-Pacific strategy. But it is foundational for Canada to stand up for people's rights, for people's safety, and for the rule of law, and that's what we're going to do. Since, since that indictment in the United States, which I'm sure you're, you're aware of, has there been any movement from India, any willingness to cooperate with the Americans and then with us because that's out publicly now? I think there, begin, there is the beginning of an understanding that they can't bluster their way through this, uh, and there is a, uh, an openness uh, to collaborating in a way that perhaps they, they were less open before. What does uh, that mean? But, it, it means what it is. There's there's uh, there's an understanding that maybe uh, maybe just you know churning out attacks against Canada isn't going to make this problem go away. So something has changed since that indictment was uh, made public. I wouldn't say it's changed, but there okay. might be a tonal shift, perhaps. Okay. Um, in recent days, your government has changed its stance on the Middle East, now calling for a sustained ceasefire. 
we've changed how we've articulated our position, okay. but the position itself hasn't changed. We have always adjusted along the way, yeah. um, but we, we were one of the first countries to call for humanitarian pauses. We have always uh, said that Israel has the right to defend itself in accordance with international law. We have always called for the protection of civilians. Uh -huh. um, as we enter sort of week nine, week 10, and so forth of this, of this conflict, we need to make sure we are uh, adjusting and moving forward in the best possible way. I, I still think that's an evolution in your stance, in spite of what you've it's laid out It's an evolution, yes. Sure. It's not a change in the stance. Well, okay. So, but, but the vote at the UN, as you know, did anger um, some Israelis, some Jewish Canadians who say that there can be no ceasefire until hostages are released, no ceasefire until Hamas is disarmed. What happens if the world doesn't start to see a different approach in Gaza from Israel? Well, first of all, that is our position, that working towards uh, a sustainable ceasefire requires the conditions of Hamas laying down its arms, releasing all hostages, stop using uh, human mm -hmm. shields, uh, and understanding there is no role for Hamas in the future governance right. of Gaza, particularly as we move towards a two-state solution. That Those are conditions around a ceasefire, which is consistent with the positions we've always but, had. But to my question, what happens if we don't start to see a change? We're, we're in week whatever, right, of this, and no one expected it to last this long. Yeah. And Israel does not seem to be listening to those who are encouraging them to take a different tack. Well, the voices from Israel's strongest friends, like Canada, like Australia, especially like the United States, that are becoming increasingly concerned that, as we have been for a long time, that the short-term actions being taken by Israel are actually putting at risk the long-term mm -hmm safety and even support for, uh, for, uh, for a Jewish state into the future. These are things that have always worried us and that is why fighting against anti-Semitism at home and around the world, uh, bringing together uh, humanitarian aid into Gaza, showing an absolute understanding that yes, Israel has the right and the responsibility to defend itself, but it has to be doing so in ways that is is careful around the impact on civilians. Do you think Benjamin Netanyahu is interested in negotiating a two-state solution? Is he the future of that conversation? I had a 40-minute conversation uh, with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, hours before we changed our vote at the yep. UN. Uh, I very much uh, shared with him our deep belief that Canada is unflinching on and has been for many years, that a two-state solution is the only way to move forward, that we have to have a free, secure, viable Israel alongside a free, secure, viable Palestinian state, that there is no long-term future there. That's a point on which um, I have a very clear disagreement with, uh, with Prime Minister Netanyahu, but we're gonna continue to work for that two-state solution in every conversation we have. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hammering at home, eh? Delivering it. Again, a man who's on top of his files. Mm-hmm. Clearly. Clearly. And again, not afraid to say that, yeah, Netanyahu is a bit of a problem. And also countering all the conservative BS, particularly about Minister Jolie. What do you mean she sees a role for Hamas in the future? That was never a thing. No. That was never a thing. You have to negotiate with Hamas for the release of the hostages because they're holding them. Duh. But not about the future of the state of Israel. Have to understand, right? Like how how difficult is that to, to comprehend? So you don't negotiate the release of hostages with people who are not holding them. <laughs> you know, it, it just it's a comedy of no, no. You know what it is? I'm borrowing a term from H. John Benjamin. It's idiocracy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, I did a little look uh, look it up. Um, the journalists uh, that were in the first segment from a city in Omni, from a city, it was a Cormac McSweeney. And uh, the lady from uh, Omni is uh, Levine Gill. And if there's yes. anybody here that's watching from Omni Television, give that woman a raise. And a lot more profile because I'm look, I've looked up her name 
everywhere on the web. I can't find her name pop up. I can't find her picture pop up. And there isn't actually, there's an Omni television website, but there isn't an Omni news website at all. <clears throat> Why? Well, oh, I, I need to correct myself. It's not H. John Benjamin. It's Mike Judge. H. John Benjamin voices several characters. But yeah, sorry, I got that mistake. Mistake. Yep. My apologies for my, my misquote. Mm -hmm. So uh, there you have it, kids. A little more from the Prime Minister's year-end interviews. I still have a couple more to listen to, and if there's anything interesting or um, that didn't pop up in the other ones, I'm thinking that the global one might have some stuff on national defense because global mm -hmm. seems to be a little uh, more national defense-centric uh, than, uh, than other networks. Uh, I'll present it to you. But the Omni City TV one was particularly important for two reasons. One, because of the different journalistic styles, of course, that you were seeing in the contrast, but also because there were questions there that you weren't, you weren't going to get from any other network. Not at all. Yeah. Very clearly. Yeah. Not at all. And, um, it's important to get the full picture. It's important to see how the prime minister Agreed. not only talks to us, but people who don't look like us. It, well, and, and we've seen that time and time again, where you know people always oh, virtue signaling. No, no, he's not virtue signaling. He's talking to people about real things that matter to them, and just yes. because they're not things that matter to you, doesn't yeah. mean they don't matter. That's life in a pluralistic society. People are going to have issues that relate to their culture. If you live in a country where you're allowed to be Canadian and something else, mm -hmm. it's not melting pot, it's cultural mosaic. Yes. Then people are going to have concerns that you will never have. I'm I will never have a concern too. about being able to get a visa from a family yeah. member from another country. No, it's not, it's not a concern at all. I can go my, my whole life unless I married into a family. Mm -hmm. Because I could go my whole life not having to think about that one millisecond. Indeed. But in a country like Canada, where we have so many people from so many places around the world, a lot of people care about that stuff. And therefore, I should do family it's reunification. Not a concern for me. No, not a thought in my head. A concern for a lot of my friends, though. Not that I have any thoughts, but... <laughs> <laughs> or a lot of people who could be my friends. I should care. We all should. Just because our family is okay doesn't mean everyone else is. That's correct. I'm currently not disabled. Currently, that's that's a that's a wise word to use there because that could change on a dime. As as our friend Melissa said, you are one catastrophic accident away from it's being the great equalizer. It, it completely is. Yes. And, and as I spoke about the other day, the amount of people that are suddenly finding themselves disabled from COVID, from long COVID, is increasing the numbers of people who are leaving the workforce because they can't work. And then you've got fools who rail on about, we can't afford a UBI. So do we just let people die? Mm -hmm. or, what, what do we do? Yeah, or get tabby G or homeless. Yeah. yeah. I've got a nice little home going on here. I can go through, I can go through every single day of my life, not worrying about that whatsoever. Because it doesn't mm -hmm. affect me. There's definitely people that are affected by it, though. But if a homeless situation gets really bad, eventually it does affect you. There's only so far away in the suburbs one can keep on moving <laughs> to not see it. Eventually it will show up at your doorstep somehow. That's why I keep on saying, 
we need to start voting for things bigger than ourselves, for issues bigger than ourselves. If we are one Canada, an expression that I like to use that I stole from Ian Van Zandt, I am not my brother's keeper, I am my brother, I'm not my sister's keeper, I am my sister. And then I need to vote like I'm my brother, yeah. and I need to vote like yes. I'm my sister. And not just me. I need to vote for the Muslim family down the road. I need to vote for the homeless yes. person on the corner. I need this to is, vote for the family that just this. arrived in Canada. My partner, X number of years ago, was a family. Mm -hmm. My in-laws were a family that just arrived in Canada. Mm -hmm. Right after the revolution in Romania, from a communist country to Canada, after Ceausescu got well, it. Communist. <laughs> I mean, really. Romania was a communist country. It wasn't was Russian No, I know. But... That's what I mean. It was it was communist, but it wasn't yeah. actual communism, uh, like textbook on paper. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I mean... No, no, no. I know it was bad. I'm referring to what actual communism, the textbook oh. definition of communism is. By that metric, it was not a communist country. No. It was a dictatorship, yeah. period. Yeah. Masquerading as communism. Yes. But I mean... That's what I'm getting at. They still, I mean, we they, we want to be factual here, right? So, like, but they know. still executed the guy without a trial. So a lot of people were not yeah. having good lives. No, no. Well, they, yeah, they executed him and his wife and hang, hung, hang them in the public square. Did they not? I'm not sure about the hanging. I know, uh, maybe I guess, but I knew that was like fire. It was, it was a public execution. Squad. Yeah, and then I thought they it, yes, it was an, and it was public. That I that that I don't know as a fact trying to remember that I don't know. It's been fact. a long time, but, um, you know, my beaver sweetie tells me stories about when he was a kid, you know, mm -hmm. being on his best behavior in school because parents did just disappear. Oh yes. Back then. So, um, when you come from that and you come to here, yes, that's a big transition. Massive. It's it's an adjustment too, yeah, because because you have to figure out how to do everything all over again, and pretty much even simple little things. You yeah, know? and pretty much every day there are people that arrive here for somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, That's, and I, and I, I meet new Canadians all the time, all the time, and every time I'm like, thanks for coming here, and they always they're they're oftentimes shocked when this. Right, this guy with this voice, this face says, "Thanks for coming here." They're, they're kind of surprised. They're like, "Oh, uh, uh, I'm like, no, thank you." Without immigration, this country will fold up, wither away, and die. That is a simple fact. And I have friends who work in the upper echelon of the federal government who have said as much. They're like, "Without it, we're dead." Without immigration, this country is finished. Because simple fact is, we ain't having babies. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, looking it up here on uh, uh, Wikipedia, the Ceausescu's were executed at 2.50 p.m. local time at military unit UM-01417 from Targoviste on the 25th of December of 1989. The execution was carried out by a firing squad consisting of eight paratroop regiment soldiers brought in by two helicopters from the Botany base. Captain Yanel Boeru, Sergeant Major Georgin Octavian, and Dorin Marian Serlan, and five other non-commissioned officers who were selected from 20 volunteers. Before the execution, Nikolai Ceausescu declared, quote, we could have been shot without having this masquerade. The Ceausescu's hands were tied by four soldiers before the execution. Simon Sebag Montefiore wrote that Elena Ceausescu screamed, you sons of bitches, as she was led outside and lined up against the wall, while Nikolai Ceausescu began singing a fragment of the Internationale before the soldiers opened fire. The firing squad became shoot, began shooting as soon as the two were in position against the wall. The execution happened too quickly for the television crew assigned to the trial and death sentence to videotape it in full. So it wasn't a public execution. 
Only the last rounds of shots were filmed. In 2014, retired Captain Boiru told a reporter of the Guardian newspaper that he believes that the shots fired from his rifle were solely responsible for the deaths of both of the Ceausescu's. Because of the three soldiers in the firing squad, he was the only one who remembered to switch his assault rifle to fire, fire fully automatic, and at least one member of the group hesitated to shoot for several seconds. In 1990, a member of the National Salvation Front reported that 120 bullets were found in the couple's bodies. And that's how much they were hated. Yeah, that's... So that, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it was, like, it wasn't real communism. It was real to them. It was a dictatorship. <laughs> yeah. no, it, well, no, but I mean, on paper, yes. it's, it was a dictatorship, is what yeah. it was. And, 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 and they were hated. And yes, justifiably so. But 120 bullets, that is what we call terminate with extreme prejudice. Yes. And apparently also from what I hear from... Uh, my in-laws family apparently um mrs ceausescu really smelled oh didn't bathe seems so well uh, those were the reports she was one of the unwashed was yes, she she was wearing also a fur coat yeah. when it happened so yeah they lived in the lap of luxury while their people were starving well the 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 parliamentary palace is actually the second largest in terms of square footage public institution building in the world. The only one bigger is the Pentagon. Yes, I've I've seen photos of the building actually. It's, it's huge. Like, yeah. It is massive. We went to we well, we kind of went to visit it. It was like 43 degrees Celsius on the day we went. <laughs> and it's and that's a little warm. All the trees cleared from anywhere in that neighborhood so it's like this big grand boulevard with fountains that lead there and this this huge building and all this concrete so by the time we got there i was it was so hot that i had turned green so we thought like <laughs> there was no air conditioning in that building as well wow. i guess it was designed to have proper air circulation but in the the holding area before you can get in there was all these tourists waiting and i was like Sweetie, we need to go because I'm going to get really, really, really sick. I won't be able to survive this one. So I didn't actually get to see the inside of it, unfortunately, because uh, it was a very, very hot day. Apparently, it regularly gets over 40 in Romania. So, and mm. then when you take away very when you take away all the trees out of the neighborhood and it's all concrete, it just makes it worse. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have anything? There's a few things I wanted to discuss. Um, and let me just bring up something for you here, which I think you'll find um, disturbing. Okay. This is um, from a gentleman who uh, we've discussed uh, his name in the past and what he has to say. Uh, sorry, I had to clear my throat. This is from uh, uh, Sean Rouse, at Sean Rouse uh, on the Twitter. Yes. Sorry, I'm, I'm we bu like bumbling, him. mumbling, and stumbling. As suspected all along, it's not about parents. It's about trans people. Higgs has been looking into bans for trans health care for young people and had purported experts present to the government on the topic. Higgs' trans youth health care claims collapsed under even the mildest scrutiny from reporters. He has no evidence for his claims, nor is he taking any care to ensure he's correct. Higgs is, Higgs is lying to New Brunswickers about trans youth and their health care, while ERs are at 360% capacity. Higgs is compiling so-called evidence to deny health care to trans youth, like is being done in the U.S. This isn't doubling down. This is an attack on trans people and their universal health care. And remember... Higgs removed elected health boards last year, so now Horizon and Vitalite, I assume those are private sector health care providers, are directly accountable to the minister and him. So he has the power to take away trans health care and make people fight him in court to restore it. We need to act now, like we did when Policy 713 was originally put in review last May. If we do nothing, it's clear what path the government is preparing to take. Holy crap. Yeah. Okay, we need to have him on. Yeah, I, I, yes, absolutely we do. I'm like, holy shit. I mean, this is, this is a level of horrible that is just beyond. 
he, he, you know what it is? You know what this is? He is going the same route as that woman in Alberta did when she talked about cookies. Yeah. Or was it cake? Jennifer Johnson cookies. Fuck yeah, you, cookies. Jennifer Johnson, by the way. Yeah. Stole that from Lisa. Yeah. I mean, he, he, he's, he does not see trans youth as human. He doesn't see them as human. Holy. Hey, Blaine Higgs, fuck you. You disgusting escape, uh, excuse for a human being. He thinks that's his path to an election victory. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not going to work. Uh, and here's how I know this. You know, people think New Brunswick and they think all shiny, happy people with, with very conservative bent. That's not conservative, number one. It's not. Not progressive at all. It's regressive. Number three, I have lots of friends throughout the province of New Brunswick and into Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and family members. And I have friends and family members who are part of the rainbow community. And you think they're going to sit idly by while this asshole throws people out like garbage? It's not going to happen. And New Brunswick is pissed. They're like, if this is what he's going to do to trans youth, who's next? Who's next? This guy's got to go. I'm wow. like, this is just unbelievably brutal. Wow. Unbelievably brutal. Yeah. Like, oh, I yeah. just it's... did something I've never done before. What's that? Right here. <clears throat> on the show <laughs> as you were saying because <laughs> please <laughs> come yeah wow wow yeah it's it's about as bad as it can get and and sean rouse who i've never spoken to the man but i've read his tweets and he goes look i'm no fan of trudeau but holy shit Oliver." <laughs> right yeah. I'm I'm speechless. It, look, there's no bottom for these people. None. We're maybe talking about should, human beings. Maybe they should be a bottom for a little bit. We're talking about human beings. Yeah, they, they don't see them as human. They don't. What what's the saying? The dildo of consequence seldom arrives lubricated. Yeah. You need to keep going. I'm, I'm, I, I don't have yeah, anything I know. right I understand. now. I'm... It's, it's, it's a lot, right? It's a lot. It, when I read that, I was like, holy shit. Like, he does not see them as human beings. He refuses to recognize them as living, breathing humans. He's denying them health care. A fundamental human right protected under the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. This guy needs to go, and he needs to go right fucking now. And I know I'm pissing off people with this statement, my speech and my attitude, but I don't care. He's denying human beings health care. What the fuck? That is, that is about the worst thing I can think of for a politician to do. I mean, I'm sure there's worse. I'm sure there's worse. But this guy is publicly doing this. He's saying it out loud. How, how, how do you... How do you I'm respond sorry, to I, that? I, I need to pull it. Yeah, no, no. Take your time, man. Take your time. It, it's, it's, uh, it's really disturbing. Yeah. He does not care. These are children. These are school children. He doesn't fucking care about them. He sees them as subhuman. So fuck you, Blaine Higgs. Fuck you. You're going to find out what happens when you mess around with people's children. People's children? People's children. You're going to find out, and you are not going to like it. You have gone way too far on this one. New Brunswickers are going to hold him to account. I guarantee you. 
Oh, he, he just wrote, everyone is lit up here today. This is something we've been worried about for a long time. We heard rumblings about this, but now we see him laying the foundation to make it happen. Sure, that sounds doable sometime next week. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Abs are friggin' lily. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's that bad. It's that bad. Now, and again, this, this is how it begins. First, they come from the lowest ranking members of society, the most marginalized people in our society. They'll take them out. Then they'll move up a ladder. One more rung on the ladder. They just keep climbing until they've gotten rid of everybody they don't want anymore. Until they've marginalized you to the point where you no longer exist. I'm not being hyperbolic here. This is actually happening. Holy fuck. <clears throat> Oh, my Sorry word. to drop that bomb on you on a Friday morning, folks, but, um, you know, we're here to bring oh, wow. you the facts and the truth. And Jesus. Yeah. it's about as bad as it gets. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say beyond that. Oh, my God. I, I'm speechless. Uh, for I'm rare... sorry uh, if anybody's listening, whoever's going to be listening to this on, on podcast, I, I'm just, I am discombobulated I am I was disarmed Linda, Linda says right here he is putting the safety and security of a class of people at risk that has to be a charter violation so they'll get rid of the trans youth first then they'll go after the homeless then, then who's next like literally who is next because this is what they were doing. Oh. And people say, you know, Paul, you're being ridiculous and you're being conspiratorial. No, I'm not. This is happening in real time, right in front of our eyes. So, you know, like I said, we'll bring you the facts and sometimes they are not pretty. Oh my God. This is not my opinion. This is not an opinion. This is what is happening. So, you know, oh my go ahead and hate me. Go ahead and hate me. Go ahead and call me down. Go ahead and shout me down. Go ahead and say whatever you want to me. I don't care. I'm going to bring you the facts, the ugly ones as well as the pretty ones. And facts, as I said, and as the Reform Party and GOP and their Trump supporters, the MAGA and the Maple MAGAs like to say, facts don't care about your feelings. Well, it's kind of funny when we bring them facts that they don't like, they get all up in arms about it. Oh, it, my and, and, Lord. Whoops. There we go from, from Re. Most Canadians have never been oppressed and cannot recognize what actual oppression is. Jesus. Yeah. How could... Like I said, doesn't care. That is just... It's, it's monstrous. Monstrous. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'll this, share this in the... After in, this. Yeah. I'll share his, his this next, in the uh, chat here for anybody who wants to access it. His next tweet, uh, somebody named Kayla Cousins wrote, uh, spent the morning going down the James Cantor rabbit hole, appalled that he was not only allowed to speak on the topic, but requested to do so. It's absolutely not about parents. And uh, Sean responds, Kayla is right. Who is James Cantor? Higgs cherry-picked expert on trans health care for youth. The answer is pretty outrageous. James Cantor's document presented as attachment D to the June 2 report also faces serious questions about bias and lack of expertise. In a 2022 case, a federal court took a skeptical view of Cantor's purported expertise, noting that, quote, the court gave Cantor's testimony little weight because he admitted inter alia to having no clinical experience in treating gender dysphoria in minors and no experience monitoring patients receiving drug treatments for gender dysphoria. Cantor's document is nearly identical to what appears to be paid testimony in another case where Cantor's declaration was used to support legislation barring, barring transgender athletes from sports teams. Troublingly, Cantor's appearance in that case seems to have been funded by the Alliance Defending Freedom, ADF, a religious and political organization that opposes legal protections for transgender people and same-sex marriage, 
and defends the criminalization of sexual activity between partners of the same sex. Because Cantor provides no conflict of interest disclosure, readers cannot ascertain whether Florida AHCA also paid for Cantor's report and whether Florida officials were aware that the Cantor report reused his work for, apparently, the ADF. And also remember that Higgs has just recruited Fatine. Yeah. To be a candidate. I'm so they went and got basically an advisor to DeSantis. Mm-hmm. Who has absolutely no experience treating or dealing with any of this. Uh, and he's running with this? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's pretty bad. I mean it's really bad. Oh, I just, oh my word. You know, every now and then I, I, you know, when I first read this, I was like, oh my God, I got to hold on to this for a bit because I was kind of losing it when I read it. I lost it in a different way. I got emotional too, but you can imagine what my emotion was. Okay, uh, he's linked uh, a few hours ago to uh, an article from Global New Brunswick. Researcher part of Trans Youth Healthcare study says New Brunswick Premier has facts wrong. An author of a study that New Brunswick cited to back his province's policy on gender identity in schools says the politician had his facts wrong about the research. In a year inter- interview with the Canadian press, Blaine Higgs said about 60% of young children who are questioning their gender identity in Canada, quote, are given automatic affirmation and put on some sort of hormone therapy after, quote, their first medical appointment. That does not happen. Mm-hmm. He cited the statistic to justify his government's policy on gender identity in schools, which requires teachers to get parental consent before they can use the preferred names and pronouns of non-binary and trans students under 16. At the time, Higgs didn't offer any evidence to back up that statistic, but his office later said he had been referring to a two-year study called, quote, Trans Youth Can, with lead investigator Greta Bauer. Bauer, the chair in sexual health at the University of Minnesota Medical School, says the study and published papers on the health care of trans and non-binary youth does not show that they are put on hormone therapy after a single medical visit. Rather, she said in an interview Thursday, the research indicates that those patients had been seen on average 2.7 different seen on average 2.7 different types of healthcare providers and had waited an average of nine months for a referral to a specialist in hormone treatment at a Canadian gender clinic. So two, for, and frequently more, if the average is 2.7, of different healthcare providers at an average of nine months before even a referral to a specialist in hormone treatment. The premier statement about the study, which was released in 2021 and looked at youth between puberty and age 15, was therefore not accurate, she said, adding that political leaders should ensure they are accurately characterizing research when making policy arguments. Quote, it's not the patient's first mental health appointment, and it's not their first medical appointment. It's the appointment where they are specifically coming to talk about getting a prescription for hormone therapy, Bauer said. Nicole Carlin, a spokeswoman for the Premier's office, said she doesn't expect Higgs to correct his statement, and it was drawn from a slide presentation summarizing the study's finding. The summary noted, quote, 62.4% of youth received a prescription at their first medical appointment at Gender Clinic. But on the very next slide of the same summary viewed by the Canadian press, it notes, quote, the majority of youth are seeing a family doctor or pediatrician before the gender clinic and are referred to the clinic by a family doctor or pediatrician. The summary also notes that 41% of patients had seen a psychologist before visiting one of the 10 clinics in Canada. During the December interview, Higgs made clear he has no intention of backing down on his government's changes to the province's policy on gender identity in schools. That New Brunswick policy has been copied by Saskatchewan, but has also led to serious dissent within Higgs' governing party, a lawsuit and strong criticism across the country. The Premier said he expects the issue to figure prominently in his Progressive Conservative Party's upcoming ill campaign for elections scheduled for October 21st. On Thursday, in response to questions about the source of his data regarding youth hormone therapy treatment, the Premier's office arranged for Erica Anderson, a U.S.-based clinical psychologist, to speak to journalists during a Zoom call. 
Anderson also cited the 2021 Canadian Survey of Care of Trans and Non-Binary Youth, noting that noting the 62.4 percentage who received a prescription on their visit to the gender clinic. But Anderson, like the premier, didn't mention the prior referrals and wait times that had to occur before patients visited the clinics. The American psychologist said, quote, we might be premature in offering medicines for some young people, if not inappropriate in offering them. Bauer said both the premier and then Anderson had not cited the study responsibly. Quote, they're portraying a misleading picture of what's happening in medical care when somebody can walk in off the street and get a prescription when, in fact, oftentimes there are significant delays, sometimes for very good reasons, around diagnosis or figuring out one's gender or making sure parents are on board or getting blood work or other medical work done. They will literally say anything. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, does it surprise me when they said he got tons of letters and then they got three, three. and then they found out that they, they then they found out that three was zero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now Scott Moe is basing his notwithstanding clause action based on allegedly eighteen letters. And I bet if we did a deep dive on those, ah, oh, I am beside myself. Yeah, no, I see that. I mean, you know, uh, like I said, sometimes we're going to discuss things that are not pretty. They are not nice. And we're not going to want to talk about them. But guess what? We got to. We have to. It is incumbent upon somebody like me to stand up for somebody who's being marginalized to the point where they are destroyed and and tossed aside and treated as subhuman. So, Blaine Higgs, you're on our radar. You're on our radar. We're going to be working with people and in Wild- Brunswick to, to dig up all the dirt we can on you and all the terrible things that you're doing, and we're going to, we're going to expose it all. Well, here's the thing. While all this is going on, all this is going on, according to Global, again, New Brunswick, the Paramedic Association of New Brunswick said the situation did not happen overnight, and paramedics have expanded their scope of practice to be able to better assist patients who call for an ambulance. Chris Hood, the registrar for the association, said there are paramedics who have waited the duration of multiple shifts, up to 28 hours in some instances, to have a patient taken out of their care into the care of hospital staff. You have people waiting for 28 hours that are brought in by ambulance, which means that ambulance is not free to go away go out and take care of other people exactly and your freaking priority is fudging scientific data mm-hmm. about trans kids so you could push this policy because you hope that bigotry is going to help you win a freaking election yeah our premiers are the problem we've been saying this all along We've been she is willing to wait your let your loved ones wait twenty eight hours mm-hmm. before they can get admitted yeah. from an ambulance to a hospital. Yeah, but he's making targeting trans kids his freaking priority. And, and you have to understand how the healthcare system works. Okay, for those of you who don't know, we should talk to Nate about this because he is a paramedic. Yes. Yeah. When the ambulance and the paramedics bring someone into the hospital. The ambulance gets parked outside and they stay with you on the gurney that you're on in the hallway until they get you a bed. That could take up to 28 hours, which means there's no ambulances. There are no paramedics available to go out and help other people because they're tied up. Quote, it's not unheard of for a paramedic at the end of their shift to be replaced by somebody at the hospital while waiting with a patient, and then they'll come back in for their next shift 12 hours later and go back to that hospital, he said. It's like getting into overdraft in your personal bank account. Eventually, you're in the overdraft all the time. Payday comes, you get out of overdraft for the day, then you're back in overdraft. And now we have 12 ambulances sitting at the emergency room at all these hospitals. Hood says he doesn't think the current setup can sustain itself in the long term. Quote, if you put a big incident on top of that, the system would collapse. Yeah. What if there's a massive road accident mm-hmm. that like, you know, mass ca- casualties, not as in death, but injuries, mm-hmm. like and 12 or 13 people need to be brought in like a Humboldt bu- bus crash. Because those things do happen. It happened to me once while I was in the hospital, in the ER, sorry, in, in uh, I was in an exam room waiting to get restitched because my stitches had ripped out and I went in to get them restitched. And doctor came in to see me 
the page came over. She just looks at me and I said, go, go. She came yeah. back about two hours later and I was still sitting there freezing because I didn't have my jacket with me. <laughs> she goes, oh my yeah. God, here's it. Gave me a blanket. She, I'm like, look, take your time. There was a bus crash that takes priority over me. I'm not going to die here. I'm not bleeding. I'll be fine. This takes priority. We have Kit Christian in the, in the chat. Goes firefighter medic for twenty years here. Yeah. Go, please, Kit Christian. If you have some uh, insight, please provide it. But we we would love to hear Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Um, Hood said the increasing workload and stress is beginning to drive dozens of paramedics out of the province. Quote, we just finished our registration season, and right now there are 121 less paramedics in the province today than there were on December 31st, so they're going somewhere. New Brunswick isn't that big a province to lose 121 paramedics. The New Brunswick Medical Society, an association that represents more than 2,000 physicians, said the overcrowding and excessive wait times on display in emergency departments throughout the province are creating a, quote, high-risk environment for all involved. Quote, the NBMS shares the frustrations of patients unable to access timely care and the healthcare providers who are working tirelessly to ensure the sickest patients are admitted and treated as quickly as possible, the group said in an emailed statement on Wednesday. Quote, things are not getting better. Family physicians across the province are calling for an immediate investment in order to stabilize their practices. NBMS went on to affirm the group's commitment to working with New Brunswick's provincial government to implement improvements to the province's healthcare system. Quote, we need to do so with a sense of urgency. And it seems that Mr. Higgs' idea of responding to we need to do so with a sense of emergency, again, mm -hmm. is going after trans kids. Of course, yeah. It's only trans kids. That's his. That's his take, anyway. He, he is. He is abdicated his job. He has stopped governing. He stopped being a premier, and he is literally in full time campaign mode. And this is January, and the elections in October. Yes, and New Brunswick, we reported a few weeks ago, went from best to worst mm -hmm. in terms of COVID deaths, mm -hmm. as well. He is literally letting people die and focusing all his energy and all on getting reelected to do what to kill more people. I'm just asking questions. And meanwhile, you're going to have PP running around all Atlantic Canada saying that Canada is broken because people can't get a hospital bed and it's freaking Trudeau's yeah, fault. No, of course he'll blame, he'll blame the federal government. As I've said a million times, I'll say it a million times more. Healthcare is a provincial responsibility. And then you have assholes like Doug Ford who cut $2 billion from our health care budget and also eliminated a billion dollars in tax revenue by getting rid of license plate registration fees. We are being governed by idiots who only care about two things. Power and money. That's it. That's it. And then there, there's the entire mess that Daniel Smith is oh, making. Oh, Jesus. We, we need to get Nate on for that yeah. as well. Talk about that because I'm so fast that I can't keep up with That's the details brutal. to actually present to you a picture. No, I know. That is complete. I, I know. I, Nate will I'm because that's his beat. Nate's he focuses timeline. strictly on Alberta. I'm following, I'm going through his timeline and I can't keep up. It is brutal. And I have a lot of friends and family in Alberta. And I, I you know, I keep in touch with a few of them. Not all of them. Some of them that don't really talk to me anymore for reasons that I think might be obvious. <laughs> My political views. But there are other ones who have, you know, seen the show and said, you know, I, I don't agree with you politically, but you're right about her. You don't need to agree with me. You need to see the truth. That's it. You don't have to agree with me. You're allowed to have your own opinion. You are not allowed to have your own facts. Okay? Facts are facts. They're not alternative. Facts are not opinions. Opinions are not facts. You facts can have your opinion. don't care about your feelings. You can have your opinion. You can have your political bent for whatever party you want. I don't care. But you cannot. You cannot deny facts. Now, this is from 338.com, and you'll see that there's been a bit of a turn in polling in New Brunswick. Of course, there's not a lot of polling, and mm -hmm. it seems that the companies are not all that great. C-plus averages. But among the ones, even among the ones that are sort of C-plus averages, you notice that there's a tightening. PCs, 37 
to 35 to the Liberals in February, in May, 34-34, in August, 36 PC, Liberals 38 gained, and then on November 15th, PCs 35, Liberals 41, and the last three are the same polling company. So it's gone from a tie to a six-point liberal lead. And I think we mentioned that, uh, I believe, in the the year-end review episodes where we saw when we were talking about uh, the year-end sort of it's a night before the night before Mm -hmm. Christmas uh, variations where there were people from the liberals that saw maybe probably Higgs was panicking because he saw 41-35. That's where that one comes from. Um, Let's hope this bottom falls out. Well. Because... The the Leger one, which is the one that has an A plus, but this is the last time Leger did was December twenty twenty two, showed Liberals forty, PCs twelve, a Liberals with an eighteen percent gain. In in all of these polls, here, looking back, even though the quality isn't all that great, since November, October first, twenty twenty one, it all shows liberal leads actually you know what i'll I'll show the thing again because Mm -hmm. it's in despite the quality it's still an issue of the trend if yeah you'll put it up mr grizzly yeah one second so if we go to um may 7th 2020 the liberals had a four point lead in this poll since then it's been pcs up pcs up 18 13 11 8 one tie here in September mm-hmm. 2020, but still PC lead, PC lead, up until boom, right here, stat, statcom, in November 2021, and then almost everything has been indicating something happened around there, and that's why we've been hearing a lot about Blaine Higgs in the news the past while, the past year and a half. Something happened back there where the bottom kind of fell out on him. Mm. That's why we're getting this shit show. I am mad. Yeah, justifiably so. Let me share something with you that I think sums up how a lot of people in this country feel right now. This is a post from at Obenson on the Twitter. Gee, I'm not going to say it. I've already sworn enough today, but JFC... And you know what that means. I have never voted liberal, but here I am defending Justin Trudeau all the time because cons are so unrelentingly jealous, ignorant, and petty. The viciousness is exhausting. I am right with you. And again, this is why we started the show off saying the tide is turning. People are so sick of the lies, the hatred, the gaslighting, And the fact that they continue to get away with it, that people are pushing back now. Make Canada great again? I don't think we've actually ever been greater. Ever. So, how about we keep Canada great and let's work towards a better future by keeping the current government in place and getting rid of the reform party that masquerades as conservative. Because they don't give a damn about any of us. Get Cassie in the chat here going, Manitoba may not be perfect, but it's not looking so bad right now. Yeah. Cassie, a progressive conservative under an NDP government, which really, it's really a progressive conservative government. I mean, honestly, let's be realistic, right? Yeah. Just our Manitoba health minister is a former nurse and member of the rainbow community. So, you know, Wab Canoe is not going to be going down that path. Oh, hey, Vim, how you doing? Oh, hey, Kid Vim. Lovely to see you. Um, as Sean Ross says, uh, I'm not usually not, I'm usually an early riser, so it's not out of the question because they're one hour earlier than us, right? Because I asked, mm-hmm. you know, we, we usually go seven. Would that be too early? Six it says it's six your time. I'm not usually forming full sentences at that hour, but I will make a special effort with a smiley face. Um, is uh, Monday good for you, Mr. Grizzly? Will you be able to, or is that an early morning you have to go in this week? No, Monday. I'm, I'm working from home on Monday, so I, we can we can go for a while. I'm All working right. away right now, but it's not super busy. I, I really should have taken this week off, to be honest with you, because 
I'd had a few little projects I got done in the office and then it was a lot of twiddling my thumbs waiting for calls or emergencies. It's like, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on components and equipment so I can do some more repair work. But until the parts show up, it's a lot of thumb twiddling this week because there's almost no one in the building. Next week we'll start to ramp up and, you know, by week three, it'll be back to insane season, but I, I welcome it. I relish it. It keeps me busy. But Monday, yeah, we can do a long show like we're doing right now. Okay, so let's yeah. l- let's do Monday then. All right, pencil yeah. it in. Yep. Uh, so Monday, we will have uh, Sean Kraus with us. Um, hopefully, well, I Sean's in New Brunswick, my- so it's an hour later there. Not earlier. Oh, sorry. Yes, later. Duh. He's Atlantic time. Yes. So seven o'clock here is eight o'clock there. See, so so discombobulated. <sighs> so thrown, so thrown. Uh, but yes, uh, he's a, a, he is a satire writer for the Manatee magazine. Satire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He's not doing satire anymore. Oh my word, uh, Mister Grizzly, I'm a, I'm a bit thrown. I think I need to stop now. Okay. Okay. Unless you have other stuff and you want to take it, um, if you've got more things to say, go ahead. I'm... Yeah, I got a couple of I got a couple of things. Um, Whew. First off, um, let's just I'm, I'm just I want to take a look at something before I before I. Uh, yeah. Okay. We're on our way. Um, the the uh, the GoFundMe is uh, up to twenty six thousand. To fight the Canada Proud yes. lawsuit and disinformation yes. from prior media. If you can, folks, if you can share that, I'll put the link in the chat if you can share it with as many people as you possibly can. Because it's important that we get the message out that um, we like to, uh, you know, bring people to task when they lie and when they gaslight and when they try and prevent us from doing so because, you know, we don't like it when people lie to Canadians. We need to spread the message that there is an organization that is heavily tied to the Reform Party, a conservative government, that rails on about freedom of speech, which is not a thing in Canada, but wants to stifle us from our freedom of expression when we call them out on the lies that they tell. They want to muzzle us so that we cannot call them out for the lies that they tell. We, we want transparency. We want truth. We want facts in media. Well, guess what? This is how we fight back. We raise money. We go to court. We, we s- counter-sue them. We defend ourselves. And I say ourselves because they're suing Cryer Media and we are part of Cryer Media. Will you and I be directly inf- affected? By, not, not exactly, but indirectly, yes. We need to fight back for our ability to speak freely and express ourselves freely when we call out people for lying. So please, if you folks can share that, we'd really appreciate it. Oh, okay. We have a Kit Saucy here. The attack on LGBTQ is also an attack on women. Evangelicals want to decide what the ideal woman or man should look and act like. It's the patriarchy looking to take back control. Uh, yeah, right. Kit Dan, I'm a straight white male, but I'm a fucking human. Whether it's LGBTQ rights or indigenous rights or seniors' rights, we are all fucking human. Love and respect for all. Yep. Uh, again, got to agree. The, the kits are like. Right? are just what rocking it here. Kit K- Tabby G, I follow Nate. He's doing a fantastic job. It blows my mind how he manages to keep up with all of it, but isn't that the game being played? Yes, the flood the zone game. Break, lo- move fast and break lots of things. And before you can notice they're broken, hopefully move on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, yep. Yeah. Kit, uh, and Sean has agreed here. He goes, yeah, oh my God, you're right. I didn't catch it either. By di- by 8 a.m., I am usually safe to be forming coherent sentences. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it looks like Monday, Monday is on. Awesome. Oh, All right. Uh, Here's something from uh, um, uh, uh, Greg McCutcran. Uh, 
Government Relations Comms, former Parliament Hill, Nova Scotia Legislature, Halifax City Hall staffer, political commentator via CBC, CPAC, Sirius XM's Canada Talks, etc. I'll, I'll share this on the screen for you because I think this is, um, well, something that you and I both feel strongly about. Here we go. Yes. Global News has reached out to Leslin Lewis and Pierre Polliver's offices is not waiting for comment. Conservative MP backs petition for Canada to pull out of United Nations. I'll see if I can get this link to work for me here. It doesn't. Oh, no, it's working. It's working. It's working. I have it working. Let me just share this tab. <sighs> Conservative MP Leslin Lewis is backing a petition for Canada to pull out. Oh, sorry. I got all kinds of stuff here on my screen. <laughs> pull out of the United Nations and its subsidiary organizations like the World Health Organization. Lewis represents the Ontario riding of Haldeman Norfolk and sits on opposition leader Pierre Polliver's shadow cabinet. Lewis, which shadow cabinet is not a thing. Lewis, a former conservative leadership hopeful and current opposition critic of infrastructure and communities, expressed her support for Canada's removal from the UN and the World Health Organization Wednesday on social media. Over 60,000 Canadians have now signed a petition calling on Canada to protect our national sovereignty by withdrawing from the United Nations and its subsidiary organizations, she wrote on Twitter. I know it's called X now. I'm still going to call it Twitter. Yeah. The Prime Minister's office is criticizing Lewis for the endorsement and accuses her party of promoting wild conspiracy theories. She does that all the time. Make no mistake, when someone posts a petition, it's because they agree with it. What is it about the UN that conservatives don't like? Is it the work they do for children around the world? Is it their programs to support women's rights and human rights? Said Press Secretary to the Prime Minister, Mohammed Hussein, in a statement Wednesday. If Pierre Polliver, or Polyev doesn't agree with this shadow minister's tweet, he would make her delete it. But he won't, because this is how they view the world, Hussein added. Global News has reached out to Lewis and Polyev's offices and is waiting for comment. Lewis has criticized the World Health Organization and a global pact it had drafted on pandemic preparedness. The petition was brought forward by Burnaby, B.C. resident Doug Porter. We know that name. Mm. Who writes Canada's involvement in the U.N. World Health Organization Agenda 2030 undermines the charters, Charter of Rights and Freedoms and could have negative impacts on potentially every aspect of life, including religious and cultural values. Calls on Parliament to urgently implement Canada's ex expeditious withdrawal and has around 66,000 signatures. A petition can only be brought before the House of Commons by an MP. I'm glad you mentioned that I had that on my list of things I wanted to discuss today and I just got so thrown. Yeah. Okay. Let's deal with her. Again, yeah. there's a word for her I so want to freaking use. I know. I so know. So want to use. I Don't. just, just, mm, just, but I'm going to ruin the entire credibility of the show if I do it. Don't do oh it. Oh my God, am I thinking it. Bite your tongue, son. I am thinking it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's she okay to think is it. it. It's okay she to think is it. is it. It's not okay to say it. It's not okay to say it, but she is it. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. oh my God. She just, okay. First of all, this woman doesn't even, she's making this claim on the basis of protecting our international sovereignty. And she's with a party that doesn't even believe in protecting the international sovereignty when it comes Ukraine. to Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. Which really different directly affects us. Cause I keep yeah. on mentioning, we are the meat in a possible authoritarian sandwich. Oh yeah. If the U S goes Trump and Putin stays there. You're you not should, saying, don't come and panic. sister. Don't come and tell me you stand for territorial sovereignty and national sovereignty. Cause I she can don't. smell the bullshit through my screen. Oh yeah, it, it's it's just. You sat absurd. down with Christine Anderson, yeah, who has been declared by her own nation. Germany has declared her party to oh, be the, the, the state of Bavaria, Saxony, Bavaria. Bavaria. Sorry, yeah, sorry, Specific, specifically, specifically, because, but within her own country. Yes, been declared. What was it they declared her as a uh, an extreme? Well, the party itself. Yes, the party, the party not itself. her, but I mean the party. Yeah. It's just, oh, 
And the other thing that they're shit gibbing shit gibbing in on <laughs> is that a verb even? Uh, was the prime minister's vacation? Yes. Yeah, now again, that. none of us know where PP went because yeah, nobody's remember, asking he, that. He couldn't even record a fresh video for this year. Yeah, he green screened something from a crowd he stood in months ago. Well, there was that thing, but also he recycled that. Oh yeah, the three-year-old that yeah. we did right, but there's an article that came out yesterday because the prime minister clarified that the vacation that he went on was provided as a gift to him. Mm -hmm. So other than, of course, they went nuts because Trudeau given a free stay at a $9,300 a night luxury Jamaican villa over the Christmas holidays. The PM stayed in a private compound at a luxury beach resort in Jamaica that rents for over $9,300 per, per night provided to him at no cost. And then you got Senator Denise Batchett going, complete with a Trudeau Foundation connection, of course. Yeah, shut up, lady. It's a longtime friendly friend. So, yeah, of course, if it's an actual genuine longtime friendly friend, somewhere along the way they would have donated to the Trudeau Foundation. Which, again, has nothing to do with the Prime Minister. It is, remember this, a scholarship program for PhD students. Yes, and that's why this ethics commissioner cleared it Unlike the last time with the Aga Khan Foundation, mm -hmm. which was Mary Dawson, the see no evil ethics commissioner, who on her way out slagged him because she decided that the Aga Khan, even though he was a pallbearer at his father's funeral, was not a friend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because there were no, her basis is that there were no, there was no evidence of real any interactions between Trudeau, the child, and the Aga Khan in 30 years. Well, yeah, Justin Trudeau, it's almost like David Johnson, right? Justin mm -hmm. Trudeau is 52 years old. He turned 52 years old on Christmas Day. Christmas Day, Day. Yeah. yeah. The Aga Khan is 87. Of course, they weren't hanging out. <laughs> He's right? known the Aga Khan since he was a little boy. He's like an uncle to him. Yeah. yeah. Now, David Johnston, Johnson, sorry, the governor general, and this is where we got, where I'm talking about juxtaposition. Um, trying to f figure out his age here, sorry. David Johnson, the governor general, is 82. Now, apparently, Justin Trudeau was a ski buddy of an 82 year old man, despite a 30 year age difference. And but to Mary the Dawson, the ethics commissioner, the Aga Khan was not his friend, mm -hmm. despite a 35 year old age difference. Yeah. Well, and you got to remember it's convenient when, he was... when people are friends or not, right? Oh, yeah. 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 yeah it's super when you're convenient. conservative. Yeah. Well, and, and, and the ski buddy thing, you know, he's, Jason, he's Justin Trudeau's ski buddy, which Polyev repeated ad nauseum. They went skiing once when Justin was 12. By that metric, by that metric, Prince Charles is a friend of mine. We met once, I shook his hand, I had a conversation with him. So that makes him my buddy, right? Is that how it works? I mean, really. So the Aga Khan is Charles, clearly sorry. more of a friend to the Trudeau family mm -hmm. than David Johnson ever was. Oh, yes. Because mm -hmm. you don't become a pal bearer at a funeral. It, it, no. Right? That is close friends and family that do that. So Mary Dawson said because they hadn't had any type of sustained contact over 30 years, yeah, the guy was in university, living it up, then an actor for a bit, mm -hmm. then he got his degrees, then he was teaching, yeah. then he got into politics. Right? There's a 35-year-old age difference. Hey, you want to go hang out? Have a, it's, he's the freaking Aga Khan. He's hey, one let's of the go world's for a richest pint. man and travels. All around. Yeah. But then he becomes prime minister. There's a rekindling of the friendship because now they have things to talk about in common. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Right? And they can talk on a certain level. But Mary Dawson decided that Trudeau 
and Aga Khan's were not friends, that family friend, friend relationship didn't mean anything. Now, the ethics code specifically, specifically has a provision in it that says you can accept gifts if they come from friends. You're allowed that. This right? comment here from, from Cassie, I think this is really poignant. Uh, very poignant, like, my goodness gracious. I mailed back my Conservative Party card when I saw how the reformers trashed David Johnson, whom Stephen Harper appointed. And made an honorary set. Oh, no, oh, sorry. That's uh, the Aga Khan. Yeah, you're right. I'm mixing things up. Sorry, I'm really emotional. You've got Don Martin, of course, again. This is ethical blindness on repeat. Not sure why the ethics commissioner gave it the thumbs up. Freebies like this come with the expectation of future favors. Maybe in your world, Don. Maybe in your world. One, you're not sure why? One, because it wasn't Harper's ethics commissioner this time around. Who seemed to have a different definition of friend than everybody else. Two, because gifts from friends are allowed. Three, because it, it, because it wasn't unethical. Duh. With regard, because it was Harper's ethics commissioner this time around, Mary Dawson became infamous as the see no evil commissioner. She decided the Aga Khan, a pallbearer at Pierre Elliott, Pierre Elliott Trudeau's funeral and a longtime family friend, was not a personal friend of the PMs. Yes. And I cited an article from Democracy Watch in 2013. Now, Democracy Watch isn't necessarily a friend of the Liberal Party. No, it is not. And it was still Duff Conacher back then, as mm -hmm. it is now who tore a strip off the Prime Minister many times. And she goes through, Ethics Commissioner Mary Dawson has let dozens of conservatives off the hook for clear ethics violations and made more than 80 secret rulings since 2007. Letter-writing campaign has thousands calling for key changes to ensure effective ethics enforcement. At that time, Democracy Watch had received 61,000 messages to ask what the heck was going on with her. Mm -hmm. When, on her way out, her last move was to slag Trudeau saying that the Aga Khan was not a friend. But here's the other thing that I did not know that I learned by going through this. And this is from the ethics commissioner, from her report specifically. Quote, it is clear from the evidence that there were other options available to transport the Trudeau family to Bell's K. She says, she claims. But then she contradicts herself in the very next sentences, of the course. RCMP, when first advised of the Prime Minister's trip to the private island, began considering various travel options to reach the island, including by boat or by chartering a private aircraft. When the RCMP became aware that the Aga Khan's helicopter would be available as an option, it was considered by the RCMP to be the best option, taken into account that it was direct and easy. The RCMP considered the helicopter to be secure, given that it had frequently been used by other dignitaries traveling to the island. The RCMP decided, yeah. after evaluating all the other ways, that this mm -hmm. was the best way to go. And she still found a way to find him in violation of the ethics code. Even though the Aga Khan wasn't on the island the entire time that Trudeau was there said, yes, you can. So he wasn't even going to visit the Aga Khan. So all those claims that they were coming and maybe he was trying to get special favor from the Aga Khan from doing some dealings, dude wasn't even there. Now she did, she did rule that it wasn't an ethics violation on that mm -hmm. front. But on the fact that, well, there were other ways to get there that the RCMP looked at and ruled out. Which is their job as the security detail for the leader of the country? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then, subsection 11.2 of the Act establishes three exceptions to the general prohibition against accepting gifts or other advantages that might reasonably be seen to have been given influence to the public office holder. The relevant exceptions to be considered in the context of this examination would be a gift or other advantage given by a relative or friend. Mm -hmm. I must therefore determine whether Mr. Trudeau and the Aga Khan should be considered friends for the purposes of Section 11 of the Act. She determined no. Well, this trip where he went to in Jamaica, mm -hmm. it's the same damn place he went to last year. 
Yeah. They are friends of the family. They've donated to the Trudeau Foundation. They're, they're, there's much more if Mary Dawson used the designation that they hadn't seen each other or had much contact in the 30 years when he was, they were completely different stages of their lives and wouldn't be hanging around together. He was there just last year. The, the <laughs> and they donated they to do. the Trudeau Foundation. It's not unethical. They are clearly friends. This is not hard to understand. They got to find a boogeyman everywhere they go. I mean, if they don't have somebody to hate, then who's beneath them? This is what it boils down to. Somebody needs to be lower on the tier than they are, and they need to have an enemy. What the hell is... How is that a way to live your life? How is that... Look, I, I fully confess, I hate Pierre Polyev. I don't know him as a person. I know people who do and said he's exactly who he is. His politics are harmful to Canadians. That's why I hate him. Oh, and that, and he lies every time he opens his fucking mouth. So when Don Do, Martin, I mean, sorry, I'm just yeah. So when Don wired. Martin says freebies like this come with the expectation of future favors, Don Martin, you're revealing a lot about yourself. Mm -hmm. Maybe when you give favors to friends, you're expecting some type of future consideration, or maybe you have friends. That when they do favors for you, expect a future consideration. You know what? Your personal experience is not the experience of everybody else on the planet, and it's not no. universal. No. The fact that might well, be true for you or your friends doesn't mean it's true for everybody else. Well, and, and it goes the right guy, back, yeah. the, the guy's marriage broke up, mm -hmm. and he's there with his ex having a family vacation because mm -hmm. they're putting the kids first and friends made their place available. I, 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 you have a problem with that. If you have a problem with that, you have a problem. Yeah. 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 You have the problem. And here's this the sounds thing. like a you problem, Don. Here, here's the thing. I, I said that CBC went on about, well, he, he stayed there for free. And I said, okay, that's great. Uh, can you tell us about... Uh, could you please report upon Daniel Smith and the hundred people she took to Dubai for cop, whatever number it was, and stayed there for like three weeks? Can you talk about that? How much money did that cost Albertans? Where's Pierre Polyev in all of this? And where's Doug Ford? Truth be told, I don't give a shit about any of it. I really don't. But it's like, why are you reporting on the vacation the prime minister's taking that, by the way, the $9,300 a night space he was in didn't cost Canadians $9,300 a night? They will find fault with him no matter what he does. $6,000 hotel room for the Queen's funeral. Okay, so I'll, I'll stay at a place for free because my friends are going to donate it to me. $9,300 a night, and he got that for free. You can't, there's, there's no pleasing these people. No matter what he does, they're going to find fault with it. And you, you do need to understand that there are people in this world who hate themselves and they will take their hatred out on everybody around them. When I was in severe depression mm -hmm. many years ago, I was in a really bad way. And I knew I was, but I didn't want to take medication because the side effects I, that, that I had the first time I took it scared the hell out of me. I didn't want to go back there. And I remember going to a friend's place for dinner. Well, and, and it was a friend of the, the person I was dating at the time, their friend, and we became friends. And they had this incredibly huge, beautiful home. They had just finished renovating. Uh, the, the, there was a, a couple that were there, and they had another gentleman who, so it was a, it was a gay couple, and there was another gentleman who uh, rented a space in, in the place. The three of them, I didn't rent it, no, sorry, I think the three of them bought this place together. And they did a full reno, and they, they had apartments in the front of it. And it was a gorgeous, beautiful home. And I remember going there one day, and he was talking to me about, because uh, he, he was an audio guy like me. That was, isn't what he did, but that was his, his hobby was audio. And he, he says, yeah, I just got this new system from Sonos. And this is about 20 years ago when it was, like, brand new. And he explains to me how it works, and he goes, you should get one. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds cool. And I remember thinking in my head, I can't. I can't afford any of that. 
And then I started to get angry at him for his success and the hard work he put in. And I remember thinking to myself, wait a minute, Paul, that's warp thinking. I had, the, I had the sort of ability to recognize within myself that I was being an asshole. I didn't say any of this to anybody, but I was being an asshole for thinking it because it's like, wait a minute, why are you angry at somebody else's success? Why are you angry at somebody who has put hard work in and is still working their butt off and built their own company and has done all this and they're happy and successful? Why are you angry with that? Cause me to look inward and seek therapy. And as a result, I came out the other side after talking to myself about it, you know, sort of doing self-analysis and talking to a, a close friend about it, saying, you know, it's wrong that I should think that about somebody else. They're like, yeah, it is. You should just be happy for this person who is successful and has done well for themselves. You should be thankful that you get to be a, a part of their world. You should be grateful that they've invited you into their home. They're not rubbing it in your face, which is where my mind went. That wasn't the case at all. They were trying to share with me the fruits of their labor. And when I was conscious enough to recognize that, I wanted to go and apologize. But there was no need to because I never said or did anything. So I apologized to them in my mind. I'm sorry I felt that way is how I, you know, I, I never discussed it with them. And I've never talked about this before this very moment in time. And it was all about how I realized I need to be happy with what I have in my life and not envy others or hate them for their success. And there are so many people in this world who will hate you for your success because they are deeply unhappy people. They, in all likelihood have depression mm -hmm. because that is what I was feeling and experiencing at the height of a depression. And I was able to rationalize it by going, wait a minute, this is warped. This is not right. I need to fix this. And was able to turn my head around it and, and be happy and celebrate their successes. And from that moment onward, all I ever did when somebody was successful and wanted to share their success with me in whatever way it was, come on over for a party, don't eat and drink, don't worry, it's, you, know, you can stay the weekend at the cot, whatever it was, I was happy for them and accepted it. And I, I taught myself to think that way. Well, whilst fighting an internal demon in my head, the depression telling me to think otherwise, I fought against it and I fucking won. You know why? Because I want to live and be happy. I want, I want to other people to be happy. It's I'm a choice. Grateful. It is a choice. It is a choice. Yeah, yes, if you have severe depression, sometimes it's hard to recognize that choice. I, it, it took me a lot of effort to get there, but I got there because I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I, I was no longer envious. I no longer felt like I was less than. I was just happy for my friends who were successful and, and living their best life. Not everybody, I recognize not everybody is capable of doing that on their own. Many of us and I did go through therapy for it. Many of us need medication and therapy and a lot of self-reflection. Maybe keep a gratitude journal. My mom gave me one years ago and I felt ridiculous. And then she's just right in it. Be thankful for something. I go, what am I thankful for? She goes, did you have a nice cup of coffee today? I go, yeah, I had a great cup of coffee. She goes, well, there you go. That's what you need to be thankful for. So it was an internal struggle and it was an internal battle, but I finally got there. And I have been for 20 years now. Now, Let's bring in a special guest, shall we? We have a special guest waiting in the green room. Okay, hold on a second before you do that. I just want to mention, that's one of the kids will often see me say, thank you for sharing in our joy mm -hmm. when something goes well for us and we get kind of, and often you will see me write when somebody has something go, going well for them, reading this brings joy. Yes, it does. And you have to recognize it. So let's bring in our special guest, shall we? All right. Get some cubs. Welcome. Hey, brother. Dude. How are you doing? Can't hear you. You got no audio. I don't know what's going on. Oh, yeah. it's your, your earbuds? Oh, okay. Not working? <laughs> Yeah, 
Oh, that changes the mood. We got no sound. Oh, you're in focus now. For a second there, it was yes. digitized, but you're 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 well in focus now. So we'll just let you manipulate yeah. the sound. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah we're hearing you. Oh, hey. Hi, how are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I, I'm just oh, uh, in a public I've space got a well up because again. I'm Sorry. getting ready, getting ready, getting ready to go to a meeting. But I wanted to say this might be the longest in the history of Cryer Media. Two and a half hours. You guys have been at it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Since uh, what are we going on now? It's two yeah, two and a half two, hours. Two and a half, yeah. <laughs> we had a lot to talk about. Today. Why? <laughs> uh, well, you know, Blaine Higgs, Pierre Polyev, the gaslighting of Canadians, yeah. the bull that's going on. Yeah. You know. yeah, it happens. You know, it's, you know, the weird part for me, the weird part for me is, is that, <clears throat> hi everybody, nice to see you, now I can see my face. The weird part for me is that so many people legitimately still hope that the things that they read and see aren't real. Like mm -hmm. that's the thing that that's where we're at. We're at this point in, in time, this point in human history where you can't uh, you, you 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 can't believe literally anything that's believe something that you don't. And we're and we're we're literally passing it off the truth. So anyway, welcome to the show, boys. Welcome to the show. Oh, cool. <laughs> you are styling, my friend. Yeah. What do you think? Do I get the? Oh yeah. Approval. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got yeah, the, yeah. I got the winter that, scarf. That, that scarf is very color coordinated with that jacket. You are. All right. Styling. What do you think? How am I doing? Do I got? Oh, oh yeah. And the do shirt I get... underneath too. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Well, of course, you got to wear a shirt underneath. Dude, you gotta, no, no. You... Well, yes, but I mean, you are you are color. Wow. What do you think? Mm. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. You 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 are yeah. runway today. I don't know if I'm runway, but I definitely am getting a lot of looks from the over 70 crowd. <laughs> hey, remember, they usually have money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I tell you what, that's the really crappy part about getting older. The crappy part about getting older is that you're, I'm 50 years old now. So I'm a bit of a snack for like old, older women, right? So like yeah. 60s, 70s. And you'll walk by somebody, and it used to be this like incredible lift that you give yourself you are someone who you were attracted to or nice to see you i get a lot of those from people who get 10 percent off at shoppers drug mart now <laughs> <laughs> well here i was this summer all excited i turned 55 and i'm like i'm gonna get the shoppers drug mart discount so i go in and i go do i get the discount and they go no they, they moved it up to 65 Son oh yeah bitch. yeah yeah, dude. See, here's the thing is that all the women that pay attention to me now are very much over 65. So what I do is I'm thinking of this new Ponzi scheme where all I do is act like a gigolo to the 65 plus crowd. Right. And then I go buy things for with their shoppers drug mart discount and then I sell them at retail. Right. So I'm making 15, 20 points on everything and I'm making money studying myself out to that community. Douglas, yes or no. Great idea. Just make, sure, just make sure you use your, your, your own shopper's point cards when you buy when you got the cash. <laughs> That's how you <laughs> maximize your <laughs> free groceries for life. That's part of the grift. <laughs> part of the grift uh, is making sure that I get do a little gigolo community uh, of just trying to get like the shopper's drug <laughs> so that I can take that margin, put it right in my pocket, and then go and you know, just show up to people's like it's Swan Lake. You can show up to people's houses and go. Okay, listen, I got Geritol, I got, yeah, got Maybach yeah, over what do you need? here. Who's in for an Imodium? Bill? I have an insurer. Insurer? Insurer. Oh, my God. Yeah, the kid's going. Okay, I got a deal on a 12-pack of Boost. Who's in? Who's in? <laughs> got kept PNC by Ohio asking, how high are your pants? <laughs> yeah if they're over your stomach right if they're one of those ones that are over your stomach that's always been like a like a bonus points if they're... Me. like a, like a physical like a physics mystery i had a typing teacher named melvin newton and i remember saying to him hey dude like can you breathe because he's he tucked his stomach into his pants right and he cinched that belt up to the point where it's like man i i i, I don't know i don't know what i'm looking at here it's just like someone <laughs> Someone like took a took a water balloon and just squeezed it in the middle. That's Ugh. all. That's all I was looking at. That's a that look. Could not have been That's comfortable. A look. 
It's bonus no, points no, if you get them above the belly button, by the way. <laughs> oh, uh, I can't imagine how uncomfortable that is. Please tell me, Douglas, you're drinking a mimosa after our podcast, please. Uh, oh, I wish, but no, it's just straight OJ. Well, sorry, not Gailey oh, Ford. It? Okay, sorry. <laughs> it's not straight OJ, it's Gailey OJ. <laughs> I'm out of coffee. <laughs> well, you guys go get some more coffee. I just wanted to say I wanted to stop in and say Happy New Year to you guys. That's all. Hey, I just wanted to pop year, in and say hi. I'm just getting ready for a meeting here, uh, and and I was watching your show and watching you guys rage, and I thought to myself, after the first hour, they can't keep this up. After the second hour, I'm like, no way, this is keep up. Now we're verging. I just wanted to say, well done, well we can done. Keep it up. We can keep it up. <laughs> Are we talking about the same thing, Douglas? Well, uh, I've been my, known my, to be slightly in, cheekily inappropriate. At my wife is uh, four years yeah. younger than me. <laughs> Did you get married? Yeah, sort of. <laughs> yeah, sort of. Why? Yeah. Why? Oh, Why? we don't live together. Oh, she's great. We don't live together. She's amazing. She's amazing. We don't live together. Are you? Have you? Been married yeah. to so, somebody so. and not living in the, that is. Yeah. Well, I told her, I said, I love her. I'll love her till the end of time. I'm not moving in with you. I'm keeping my apartment. She's like, oh, that's cool. She goes, what about when you get old and feeble and need a place? I go, oh, I never thought about that. She goes, I'll build a bunkie in the back for you where you can have a studio as well. <laughs> Flash She's the awesome. bling. Flash the bling, my friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got you, you got that. That's nice. Too. You got all the rings. You know what's really cool is at the age of 55, you're doing promise rings. I think that's awesome. Yeah, okay. we're cool. gonna do a little thing this summer at my friend's cottage on the dock. Are you? I I'm said, uh, are you gonna get married? Is it like a real yeah, yeah, marriage, or is it like yeah. a dock marriage? No, it's gonna be a real one. And we're. I was saying, do I do this? Do I do I wear the red speedo with the black bow tie, or the black speedo with the red bow tie? <laughs> She's like, you have to wear pants for the ceremony. Yeah, but you're but you but, but you know, it's like usually after the ceremony, they go and they change, right? The, oh, we're going to do it on the dock, afterwards. and then I'm diving in. <laughs> so it's you crazy. can wear both. Uh, my, 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 my theory is that I always white shoes when you can have both. <laughs> I'll get tear away <laughs> pants. <laughs> I don't pronounce your in wife. <laughs> there go the pants into the lake. I yeah, go. Tear aways. Dude, if it works in the NBA, it can work for you too. Just oh, Kit Mohan's got it. Red tear-aways. Speedo over pants. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Nothing says I need to be mentally institutionalized like red speedos over your pants. That'll be fun. The underwear goes for you. Well, dude, I'm really pants. happy for you. I didn't even know that you got married. I had no idea. I just thought I just would see this girl show up on your podcast. I'm like, oh, she's for sure seeing him naked, so she has no fear. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I like her already. Because I see him naked, and you scare me with that thing, dude. You just scare me with it. I like her already because I'm like, she's courageous because I've seen that guy naked. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, uh, guys, happy, happy. (laughs) Douglas is losing it. I don't know what to say. Poor. It's not like we're telling tales out of school, right? Like it's, true, uh, true. He sent me a Christmas last year. He sent me a full frontal nude as a Christmas present, and I'm like, I don't know what to do with this. But it scares me. Um, and, so, and so that's what we're referring to. But anyway, boys, listen, I want to thank you for all the work you did today. It was like legit. You need thank to you. stop at some point, right? Unless you're doing a telethon. You guys ask for money. money. <laughs> <laughs> I called myself a queen. Send me some green. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you guys. You have a great day. Happy you New too, Year sir. to the True North Eager Beaver podcast. It's one of my favorites, Mr. Grizzly, Mr. Beaver. Happily named. Kind of, not really. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. All right. All right. You too, sir. Bye. Bye. Oh, I love that guy. Awesome. <laughs> uh, all right. You know what? I was going to shit given on uh, Spencer Fernando, but I like this note better to end the yes. show on. So, um, yeah, let's just do that. Yeah, I think we'll we'll wind it up there because like like we're 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 pushing the three hour mark right now, and uh, you know what? We ended on a positive note after dealing with a lot of heavy stuff today. Yep, I like that. I like that. So let's much. end on a super positive note. Yep. <laughs>
uh, like Kit Moyan goes to the Chuck and Dean shows are amazing. Yes, they, they really are. They are. They are. They are. Yeah. Very, very so. Yeah. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like that. Because Miss Sedeka, they've had much longer shows, Dean. We love it. Yeah. We're not done with the outro yet. So <laughs> it's yeah, going to take a while. Bit, yeah. <laughs> well, kids and cubs, that's the end of this day, uh, the Daily Beaver morning show, podcast, whatever it's called. I forgot the name. I'm so happy now. I, I've I've run the gamut of emotions on this one. Yes, you have. Uh, sir, that could not have been better timed. I thought so. Because I, I so. was really, mm. I, I was in a bit of a, mm -hmm. I was oh, shook. I, I was shook. Well, and, you know, it's. And to see just a happy, loving face. Mm-hmm gratitude uh and, and i mean he thanked us and we got to thank him i mean we wouldn't be where we are without him right now this is yep. the honest to goodness truth yep i mean dean saw me yelling at people in the street a friend of mine reached reached out to me and said uh, do you mind if i send this you know dean was talking about you do you mind if i put you in touch with him i'm like go ahead i have to own what i did somebody uh, tweeted out to me not too long goes are oh, you make it your whole identity i go no I don't make it my whole identity. Other people do, so I'll own it. I did that. It was me. I accept that responsibility. I did this. Nobody else did. So I own it. It's as simple as that. It's not my whole identity. <laughs> I own what I did. I don't see why that's so complicated for people to understand. Yeah. I mean, this we talked about it before doing the show, right? When we went for, for Mr. Briz, Mr. Beaver, Mr. Grizzly. It's like, yes, there's the blue jacket thing, but like, we don't want this to be the Douglas and blue jacket guy show. No, it's not. Yes, That's why we, we don't call aggro. it that. Yes, we get aggro. You know, yes, we get upset at times. Yes, we'll drop a couple of F-bombs. Yes. Mm -hmm. you, know, we'll, you know, Mr. Grizzly and I rage in different ways. Um, yes. But like, I rage. <laughs> I, I can get there um but it wasn't about that it wasn't about you know getting on and saying you know f this and f that and this guy's a shit gibbon and this guy's a even though we do say that a lot <laughs> but it, it wasn't about that it really was about trying to do the political literacy and the media literacy piece and then yes. if anything else happened th then do that but uh Clearly, it's not everything you are because you're also Mr. Grizzly and you're also my brother and you're also a wonderful partner to Bridget and you're also a wonderful son and, you know, you're also a wonderful friend because you, these are all aspects of yourself that you show. But, you, you know, you share about your Scotch and Sugar Cigar Club. You, you know, share about your time with Bridget. You share stories about your mom, about your dad, about, you know, we do our podcasts where we show that we're real human beings, that we have other sides to us. We're not just political beasts. We're, you no, know, we have nuance. You know. Yeah, because <laughs> we have full lives. Yes, incredibly full lives, incredibly busy full lives. But once again, I, I do want to express my gratitude to, to Dean, to Cryer Media, to all the kits and cubs, everybody who, who has followed us, sent us so many wonderful messages, even the haters. Thanks. You've increased our engagement numbers. So keep hating. And sometimes keep we hating. learn. Sometimes we oh. even learn from the haters. Yeah. Oh, no, it's true. It's true. Because we're open to learning. We're not closed books. A mind works best when it's open. Hmm. And we are sometimes open to learning. Sometimes a hater will make a point. Yeah. And we they will... Won't, they we won't will make it in a good way. <laughs> but we'll concede to that point, but we might just sort of steer the linguistics about it a little bit. But, you know, we're not right about everything. We don't profess to be. We try and get everything as right as we can. We're all about facts. Occasionally, occasionally, we will get things wrong. We will correct ourselves upon that because we are only human and we are going to make mistakes. We try and make as few as possible. Yeah. But if we make them, like, I mean, I've issued gentle corrections on myself. And uh, when we did the recorded, I, I haven't said it so much since we've been doing the lives, but when we were doing the recorded, right? You know, if you've got gentle corrections for us, like, we want them. Yes, we do. Because it yeah. is. I don't, I know often that I am right because I do the research and the work to make sure that I'm right. And I try not to say things unless I know they are right. But 
if I am wrong, I want to know. I want to know. This, I want to know better so I can do better, so I can deliver mm -hmm. better product. So I was like, gentle corrections. You know, and that's why I said, even on trivial stuff, like hey, having been wrong about the temperature yesterday. Yeah, little because, things like that. We're going to correct because, ourselves. I will do the gentle, I will do the gentle. It doesn't matter if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. And to, me, to me, that's part of the integrity of the show and the building. We want this play to be a place that you go where you can trust what it is that we say when we say it. So even if we are, wrong about something oh well we don't have to mention that that's rather innocuous no because if you let the little things slide it makes it easier to let the big things slide mm -hmm. okay, so we we don't give ourselves a pass no 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 we do not no but uh, I'd, I'd like to echo what mr grizzly says uh, you know the gratitude it's, I mean, it, it, it shows in our numbers, it shows in our viewership, it shows in the tips that you leave us, it shows in the number of positive comments when we put a show out. I mean, just even looking at our, our YouTubes, right, we've had a couple of shows recently cross the 200 views on our Just YouTubes. on our new YouTube channel. Just on, yeah, just on the YouTube channel, but the, yeah. but the 200 yeah. views, because, you know, normally 120 like this, and we still have some every now and then that, that, mm. that don't hit 100, depending on the topic or whatnot, or the time of year something like that, but way we're, more regularly. And we're, we're, we're trying to steer more people to the YouTube channel to get them to subscribe. We, on average, we, the average show I think gets around 3,500 viewers across multiple platforms yeah. of, of the metrics that I have available to me. Uh, yeah. Work has more of course, but uh, on average about 3,500, some go way beyond that. Some go way beyond that. We, you know, it's, if we can get to, if we can steer people towards the YouTube channel, that would be great. <laughs> like by all means, continue to watch on whatever platform you want to, but please subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube. You drive our numbers up. You might be watching it on Twitter or Facebook or Twitch or uh, daily motion or a number of platforms that we're on. Mm -hmm. Cryer media, YouTube, Cryer media, T Twitter, Cryer media, Twitch, Dean's Twitter. Wherever you're watching, please continue to watch. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. But yeah. come to the YouTube channel once at least. Give us a visit. Subscribe there. And uh, maybe if you join in the chat, you might, you, might, you might really enjoy that. Yeah. But it's like of the last 11 shows that we have on there, right? There are four of them that are 163 and above. And that's above our average mm -hmm. on Twitter for show. On the last 11, something's happening. Mm -hmm. It's Like I said, the tide is turning. Something is happening, and that's that's you. That's the gift of your attention. It's the gift of your time. It's you choosing us. Yes. And all we can do is put it out there, and once we put it out there, it no longer belongs to us. No, it belongs to you. And then it's what you guys do with it, mm -hmm. and, and what you're doing with it. Except it, it just provokes tons of warm fuzzies. So um, this gratitude moment brought to you by... <laughs> <laughs> a beaver and a grizzly bear. Yeah. Um, so kids and cubs, this is the end of the daily beaver morning show. We hope that you enjoyed listening to us because we love making this for you. We really, really, really do remember sharing is caring. So please, um, give us more things about which to be grateful, mm -hmm. please. Yes. Share them um, with us. What are you grateful for today? Share. With yes. Us. Yes. Let whether us know. Whether it's in the chat, whether it's in an email, whether it's a tweet, Facebook message, share us what, share with us what you are grateful for today. Cause I guarantee you, you're grateful for something. And as I said, just a few minutes ago, my mother gave me a gratitude journal 20 years ago because she knew I was going through a really tough time. And I go, what, what am I grateful for? My job? Blah, 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 blah. And she goes, how about a cup of coffee? How about a beautiful sunrise? How about the nice exchange you had with the person at the coffee shop, even if the coffee wasn't good? And I went, you know what? I lost, I had lost the ability to find, to, to express gratitude for the simplest of things. And when you express gratitude for the simplest of things, when you smile at somebody, when you say, thank you very much, it I makes mean their it. day better, which in turn makes your day better, which in turn makes everyone around you better. Yep. You got to spread that love. Got to spread that positivity. So sharing is caring. Share the good word, tell your peeps and poops, all that good stuff. If you would like to be sure that you do not miss an episode, you don't have to because of 
the, gray the generosity of the gray gray girl for which we are grateful very much so that's why we mention it every day so if you scan that qr code that is beyond uh, that is beyond that is under my chin <laughs> right now that will take you to our pod page site and if you are listening that's podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and that way when we have something fresh off the bandwidth it will come directly to you and if you like to smash with buttons i believe that we have kit elaine out there telling everyone I, i'm listening yes yes I believe she's telling people to uh, smash the button before you leave. Yes, I believe that's the words that she's saying. Yes. So, and we have three of them for you: like, share, subscribe. You could smash one. You could smash two. You could let your freak flights fly and smash with all three. We won't judge. We won't judge what you do in the privacy of your home with your mouse. Up to you. Just saying. But we like it when you smash all three. You get a little happy. I'm going to start showing some of the gratitude on the page here that people have expressed to us. Oh, lovely. Yes. Please do. Please do. Um, so, yeah, if you go to that, uh, you help us out a lot. And if, after paying your Christmas bills and donating a little bit to the Red Cross and doing some good in your community, you have a little leftover and you would like to support us to do a little more, well, then we would welcome that very much by you going to the emergency hydration fund at our coffee page. The QR code by Mr. Grizzly's head will bring you there. And if you are listening, you use those lovely digits on your lovely hands or your voice prompts to go to coffee.com. That's ko fi.com slash eager beaver lowercase letters all in one word and there's where that's where you will find our tip jar we thank you very much for everything that you can donate last year was a record year for us december was our record month uh, you were all very generous to us at the, the end of the year particularly for christmas so um thank you again more gratitude because democracy is something that you do donate to the Red Cross. A lot of Canadians need some extra help. It was a really rough summer and looks like we might have another one in store. So it's not maybe we should year. help build a, some reserves if that's possible at all. Go get your shots. As we kept on telling you, hospitals are really overcrowded. So do your best to try and stay out of them as much as you can. Your flu shot, your pneumococcal shot, your RSV shot, your COVID shot. Remember the COVID shot, your XBB shot. It's not just a booster. It actually is a whole new formulation. Mm -hmm. Oh, so and by please, the way, when I got uh, mine, I don't know about you, but when I got mine, zero side effect on this. Yeah, one. zero side effect, zero. me too. I expected yeah. to, I expected to get walloped because it was a new formulation and it didn't happen. No. Well, the yes. first one knocked me on my butt. The second one made me a little tired. Everything thereafter is big. Yep. Nothing. And if you're over 50, get your sing shingles one. Trust me, you'll thank yourself. You got to pay for that one. Not though. fun. Yeah, but shingles are not yeah. fun. No, I got to go get my shot for that. Actually, I've had I've had one bout of shingles in my life about eighteen years ago. Mm -hmm. it, it was so mild. The doctor's like, "Do you want any painkillers for this?" And I go, well, "Every now and then, I get a little twitch. It, it looked like I had a cat scratch me on my chest, and I had two lumps under my arm. That was it." Okay. I go, "This is shingles." He goes, "Yeah." He goes, "Is it painful?" And I go, "I've had worse." <laughs> mm. Yeah, but that was a very mild case. Oh, he he was like, "It's one of the mildest cases he'd ever seen." Mm -hmm. Uh, what else do we have for you? Oh, because democracy is something that you do. Also, please write those letters, especially if you're in New Brunswick. You know what? Even if you're not in New Brunswick, write that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I don't. Go ahead. Say bleepity what you want to say. Bleep, 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 er, with lots of Ks and K sounds in it. Um, and let them oh, this know is that when we you need are this. not having it. This is when we need somebody from Scotland to come on here and call them out. Yes. Nobody swears. Like, the Irish swear a lot. But the Scots swear with... String which, them together. Oh, my God. Not only that, but they have the most unique words that they just... I don't know where they come up with it. Yeah. Let's go with wanker. I should reach out to my friend in Glasgow <laughs> and say, could you come on and, and come out? And it just, well, what we'll do is I'll get her to record a list of like a whole line of swears. Just take it all out. I'll record it and I'll just, every now and then I'll hit the button and put it in there, you know? 
<laughs> but do write those letters. It's very important. The kids need you. The kids need you. Here, Dan's, Dan's saying it right now. I'm not going to read all the words. I did put it on the screen, but I'm writing Higgs today for show. Sure. I'll say it, Douglas. Higgs is a terrible bleep, human bleep, 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 piece of bleep for denying humans health care. Yeah. Bleep, bleep, yeah. you Higgs. <laughs> We've already done enough swearing on the show today. We've got our, we yes. got a full. We, we have well, a, we quota. a quota. <laughs> I, think we, I think we surpassed it. You even got me to swear today. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, I really try to keep that in check for the show, but you got me to swear today. So, I mean, yeah. all right, Mr. Grizzly, please, words of wisdom. Even you though know, you have been dishing a lot out a lot of it, uh, I have to say during the show. Well, thank you. Um, uh, on a day like today, when we've expressed our anger over what is happening in the province of New Brunswick, over the gaslighting that uh, Canadians have been exposed to over the last few years by the Reform Party... I'm going to call it what it is. It's the Reform Party. Conservative yep. is just the name. And they did that to try and pull the wool over your eyes and convince you that they were still conservatives, but they're not. Hmm. They, the Conservative Party has been dead for 20 years. And I need people to know that, number one. Number two, the gaslighting, like I said, the, the terrible things that are going on, people are, they've had it. We see the tide turning. We see Canadians uniting together to say, enough. We're tired of your crap. It's starting to harm people. It's been doing it for a while, but a lot of people are just opening up their eyes to the harm that's being done. So share this. Share Cranky Canuck. Share Dean's show. Please. Please do this. Share Charles show. Share Nate's show. Yes. Let share the know. Albert Stan Live show. Show share the 905er. Share Laura Babcock's show. Yes. They, they don't have to be on the network. People that are doing the good work. Share the share the the the, the TikToks by Lisa and by uh, Creek Pete 2 and Frank Dominic and uh, Unlearn 16 and Oh god, yes. Uh, all these people that are doing their bit in their own way. Like this, we're a network. Mm -hmm. We're networks. I, I, I'm by bringing them on, by building friendships with them. Like this, I'm trying. We are trying. I should speak in terms of we. No, we are. I, I keep on thinking in terms of the vision, what I had mm -hmm. when, before I met you. But it's 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 a we thing now. I just stand up and show your weeness. <laughs> <laughs> but ah, uh, good. That's good. That's good. I it's, stole that from SNL from the early 1980s. Ah, I like that. But it's. You know when the convoyer people said, you know, we're a movement? Mm -hmm. Let's let's let us be an actual movement. And we're not gonna go in the streets and just yell and scream for no reason like this, that we will actually do the work. Do the work of being happy, doing the work of being optimistic, doing the work of being grateful, doing the work of being involved in democracy, doing the work of choosing to be informed. Yes. It's like, it's choosing to be informed. And we do understand, as I've said on this show many times, and I'll continue to say, not everybody has the bandwidth in their day to get the full story. You want to sit down and watch the six o'clock news, but you don't have time. You just get little tidbits here and there throughout your day. Well, hey, guess what? Because we're on YouTube. Maybe you missed our live stream. That's okay. You can watch us at your leisure and get the straight goods. So please, let's let's make this country a better place for everybody. No exceptions. No. Even the ones who hate, even yeah. the convoyers, because they're in some of them are in some dark, lonely places. This but, is the thing. I I I, I feel compassion for them. No empathy. No empathy. No sympathy, but compassion, because mm -hmm. they're in a dark place. And they're convinced that everybody's out to get them when that is not the case at all. Mm -hmm. yeah. They have and been co-opted by programs like uh, Tucker Carlson and, and, and Fox News and The Rebel and a number, a litany of media outlets that lie to them constantly. Mm -hmm. And if you hear the same lie repeated over and over again, you start to believe it. So, so you you and you've seen the example. There's lots of happy New Year's, except yeah. So so so. What the hell does that mean? 
Happy New Year. No exceptions. For everybody. Everybody. No exceptions. No. Nope. Pretty sure. simple, right? Yeah. Just Happy New Year. Everyone. Make it a good year. I'll steal a line from Barack Obama on his first inauguration speech. We will extend our hand to you if you are willing to unclench your fist. Ooh. It's a good I one, like right? That. That's a good one. I did not remember that one. Yeah, that was from his first... I remember that like it was yesterday because it was like, oh, that's, that's poignant. We will extend our hand to you if you are willing to unclench your fist. If you, if you put up your dukes, we're going to have ours up to protect ourselves. But I'll extend my hand if you're willing to unclench your fist. Oh, I, like, I really like that. It's a good oh, one. That's right? nice. that, that, yeah, write it down. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Grizzly, we hit the three hours. There we go. All right, that was our I goal. I just saw the odometer go <laughs> click, click, click. Uh, well, kids, that's the end of this episode. Now. <laughs> thank you for, thank real you for quick watching first. the Eager Beaver telethon. <laughs> I want to show you something real quick first. Remember last year when I was going on about Canada's going to hit 40 million people this year? And it did. Are we oh, going we're going to hit 41, 41 million already? very, very soon. Holy crap, that's fast. Yeah. 41 million, it like, pff, I'd say by what, March or April? And look at Ontario's population. We're about to hit 16 million. Mm-hmm. We're, not, we're less than 100,000 people away from that. Wow. Isn't that crazy? That is. That's just mind-blowing to me. Jeez. All right, kids and cubs. Uh, I have no words of wisdom. Uh, I, I've ran the whole gamut of emotions, so, uh, Mr. Grizzly, just roll the credits, please. I can do that. I just, what Wob Canoe said, give you a hand up, not a handout, right? Mm -hmm. And here we go. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community and forum. And the Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from fresh farm ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Right, kids and cubs, and just for an Easter egg, very briefly, I want to give a shout out to tennis player Gabriel Diallo, who uh, made it to the semifinals of an event in Canberra before having to bow out to the number one seed. Great uh, start to the beginning of the year. I think also did uh, pretty well in doubles. I think also getting to the semifinals there. And uh, some good luck to Denis Shapovalov, who's returning to the court after being off it for quite a while with an injury. So I hope his first match goes well. All right. Lots of love. Have a great weekend. Gotta share a funny graphic with you first, though. Okay. <laughs> I'm not even going to describe this for the audio. I'll cut it out of the audio later, but for the people viewing. The one in the middle, funny. the yeah, one in yeah. the middle actually is true. My father-in-law mm -hmm. does yoga and whatnot and all about the body positioning. And I know. This like this. That actually is the best way. We actually went and bought ourselves a little stool <laughs> actually after he told us that. It actually does work. Just so Wait, you hang know. Hang on. Though. Let me just Facts first. Down, the fact that I'm in this exact position right now, it's pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd get a kick out of that. All right. I'll see you.